<laughs> no. no, but it is being recorded. Yes, sir. Um, and then the other side of that is Ranger, Space Coast Paratrooper is writing a check to Ranger Aaron Heat. Yes, sir. And Ranger, this person signing the check is Jerry Larson of Lawson. 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 Um, he owns Ranger Aaron Heat, so essentially he's writing a check to himself. Right. And was there any discussion that that's... We, we approved that because okay. he had to pay for the parts. He was donating his labor. From the best of my memory, mm -hmm. that was what happened. And the back to uh, guys, if, if I miss something, I apologize because I know you got a lot. So, of so when this second piece, first the check to Trey, then the air conditioning, was his invoice paid in full at that point? Trey, Trey said at that point that he would be, he would forgive the rest of the debt because you point. only compensated Ranger for for materials, for materials not, not for labor. labor. Right. So the labor could be that other. Oh, thank you. Sorry. And is there any documentation between any emails, anything to... I can only tell you that, uh, and, and I'll do a search of my Gmail account, because I have a bunch that I did searches on. I, that's how I know Don Overton started with this April 2015, because he was approving the first look at things at that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how I know that, because I got an email back from him. Uh, I'll do a search and see if I have anything. I know pretty sure that Javier and myself brought Trey to the organization. I knew Trey's ability. Tr Trey's a very, very smart guy. He, is, he works very hard. And I know that he can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. He's a good man. He's got a good heart. And I knew that he would be a benefit to us. And obviously was. I mean, if you look at those lots at 5,000 apiece, all improved lots, by the way, meaning city water city, mm -hmm. at 5,000 apiece, I believe all improved lots. Mm -hmm. uh, improved lots. Uh, and five times eight is one. That's, it. That's right. So, so Trey more than paid for his week just in that alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, well, it's just a little different. I mean, my only, my only concern about it is, you know, when we spoke with Trey, I'm sure you, you know, I know for pretty certain that you guys have talked about Absolutely. this and talked about everything else, that when we spoke to him about the services he rendered, um, there was not a lot of definition. It was. Uh, I was representing him, I was a proclamation, and I was uh, out there trying to get donations and stuff. There was no mentions. I know personally myself, if I was like the guy, if I was Trey, and I went off and you gave me, you know, fifteen hundred dollars and hey, I want to retain you, I'm gonna go, and you know what? I just went off and I just got these guys forty thousand dollars worth of lots. And you know what? I got you five boom thousand dollars worth of, of gift cards. I would have been proud about it. It's just, it, it's odd to me. And if you were in my shoes, sure, you'd be sitting there going, yeah, that's kind of weird. Didn't Why didn't Trey even bring that up? Done specifically so. and well, and, and when, I, else. when he brought that subject up to me, because uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I talked to every, just about everybody you guys talked mm -hmm. to. The, the friends of mine, they called me up. Mm -hmm. and, and I told everyone, I'm going to call them up today. I told everyone, I'm going to tell these people the truth. Be straight up with them. You did nothing wrong. It's so are you, are you saying that the those people he saw, lied to us previously and that no one else remembers these details as you do? Oh, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm, okay. I'm saying maybe they don't remember. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, the Trey got us those lots. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care what Trey says. He he helped. If it wasn't mm -hmm. for Trey Holden, we wouldn't have those lots. That's a God's honest truth. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for Trey Holden, now I don't know the details as much for the lots as I do for the Home Depot card, mm -hmm. but I know that he had something to do with that. He also had a resolution prepared to go before the governor when Overton was taking over. Um, and I don't know that he was going to submit that through one of the politicians' office to have them carry it, because that would have been a feather in our cap. As a matter of fact, the governor did come down and do a thing in front of him, you know, took a picture in front of the home floor of truck. Yeah. Yeah. But a resolution so. really isn't anything but a piece of paper and I'm waving, the, uh, and I don't want to use the term flag, because I'm pressure sure. military myself. Indirectly. But, you know, you know it's, it's, if I was paying five thousand dollars and someone got a resolution, I'd feel judged. No, well, and I'm sure you would too. But but I felt like the, I was more than satisfied at that point because of the because sure. of the properties. So. Yeah. Um, just one point we brought up and didn't completely finish was you calling Jerry and saying I have a, a veteran in, in need. Um, why was I didn't say it that way. I okay. Mean, how did you say it? I said I said this is positive on two things. This is a good thing for two things. We owe this guy money, and he's a veteran. 
they need. And what's our primary mission? Okay, when you focused on, or not focused, when you first sat down here and you talked about your mission was wounded veterans, it's Trey, wounded no. veteran. Um, so really there's Matt Wolf, but we helped him out okay. when he was in. So if the Space Coast Spirit Troopers is wanting to help a veteran in need who's not a wounded veteran, who's also at this point on city council, um, that just seems like yeah. a huge conflict of interest and looks bad. And you're right, bad. it does. And I, I can't tell you, I mean, I just told you the truth. Okay. Uh, and I'm not going to lie to you, it does look bad. But if Jerry has no recollection of being told that was because you owe trade money, is he not telling the truth? I, he, he probably just has no recollection of it. He okay. owes trade. Well, he has the recollection of being told that a veteran in need needs his air conditioning fixed, but he Absolutely. knows nothing else as to why he used to fix that air conditioning. I'm not calling Jerry a liar, okay. but I'm telling you exactly what happened that I remember. Well, I just, but Space Coast only reimbursed them for materials, not, not for labor. labor. Right. Mm -hmm. Then why would he know that then? Well, because uh, he, he says he was donating his labor to a veteran in need. That's your question. Was, what came first? Was it the air conditioning? Because I, I really only looked at some of those ones. You can take these and look at them. I mean, your attorney has copies. They're sort of small, but um, this is oh, May and this is July. And this is the, the fit repair of the air conditioning? Yes. Oh, I see. So he wrote $1,500 to the whole strategy? Yes. So he knew that we were hired. We already hired him. Yes. So it only makes sense. He, he, he says he didn't know that was the same person. He didn't know the AC was going to trade. He didn't deal with Holton. He so, dealt with his wife. You know. But he knew that we owed him money, is what I'm telling you guys. He, he had to. Well, the, the invoice was well, there. On the check, it says Holton AC. Right. Yeah. But he didn't link that Holton right. strategies and Holton AC were. Okay. That's what he All says. right. So um, he, he so gave him, he had already get, written him a check at that point. So he knew that Holton was, we were implying a Wow. You would think. But well, how could he come back two months later and say he didn't know we weren't? Well, Holton is, I mean, it's not like it's an uncommon name. So just you to know, ask you specifically, uh, Lewis or Murphy, um, you did, it's not you're saying you did not misrepresent to I, Larson who Holton was or why you were fixing his air conditioning? No, no ma'am, I didn't. I did tell him as, a, as an additional benefit he is a veteran, and that's what we're here for. Uh, we've helped veterans that, that are totally able. You know, we, we've helped veteran spouses that are employed. I mean, okay, so I'm saying Holton was a veteran in, in need. He was in need of his air conditioning being right. fixed, or there's some other issue with it, It's July in Florida. He's a veteran in need. Okay. And, and that's what I told him. But I also, yeah. I know for a fact, I mentioned that we owed him money as well. Okay. At least I, from the best of my memory. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't sit here and say it. Okay, sure. but you're sitting here saying you did not intentionally misrepresent no. that in order to pay for a city councilman's no. air conditioning. No, I wouldn't do that. No, ma'am, I didn't do that. Okay. Yeah, because this would be perfectly candid. I mean, that, that is bad. something that that is something that's coming. And you can again back to sitting in my shoe or my shoes. I think there's you're two shoes. You're wearing two of them. Yes, mm -hmm. two shoes. Um, and you don't sit in your shoes. You actually stand in them. I'm pretty sure. I get this down to a science. As soon as the second cup of coffee, well, there won't be nothing to rest. So. You know, if you've got Javier saying one thing, Jerry Lawson saying another, you've got a city councilman, and, and, and you saying a completely different thing, you can understand where we're sure. coming from. It looks, it, it not only looks bad. And I'm very close uh, with Trey. And, and you, you know, guys being very close with Trey. Certainly, certainly. But do you, I'm assuming that uh, he helped you get your job. No. You did not? Nope. I was hired by Greg Link. Okay. But Trey Holton voted Greg Link selected him into office. Right. I do have a question though when it comes down to this real quick about you mentioned uh, allegations of Bailey doing drugs. And yes. That's, that's obviously a concern because the scope of what we look into is everything and anything we, right. that's brought to our attention. Tell us about that. You found out about that. It was, uh, it was in a conversation I, I had with Steve Buchanan. Mm -hmm. now, I want to say Joe Aguiar was there, but I don't recall. Uh, uh, and it was at it was at Joe's farm, but I don't know if we were waiting on Joe to get there. So we, once in a while, we meet and smoke some bars. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is when Stu and I were close. Now, keep in mind, Stu left my charge in February 2016 because I wanted him fired. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to know that. Um, and there's a sequence of events I gave Landon to give me you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you ever saw those. Or not. But anyway, uh, so I was told by uh, Steve Buchanan that he was in fact. 
starting coke, if that is what it was to me. But they actually wanted to put video cameras in the area that he was snorting the coke in. You say they. Meaning mm -hmm. Stu and um, uh, Joe Aguiar, because it was Joe Aguiar's property. Okay. He didn't want the drugs on his property. And what were the purpose of installing cameras in that property? Just to see if Bailey was going over there doing cocaine. Okay. Okay. At least I don't know what the 100% purpose okay. is. Well, were you involved in the planning to no. install cameras? No, the cameras never got installed. Okay, well, were you involved in the discussion to install the cameras? No, not fully involved. Okay. I was just that one time that was brought up. It was never brought up again. I called the deputy sheriff the next day. Jason West was his name. Uh, I called him and reported exactly what I just told you. Okay. Did you also talk to anyone in the Palm Bay Police Department? I, I didn't want to do that because Jeff Bailey is a council member and I don't want to put my Palm Bay cops at, uh, in the mix of that. What about Chief? Ben Bailey had already, Rankins, I think I did mention it to him. I mean, you have to ask him about it. Okay. Because I'm very close to Mark. So you did talk to the Palm, you talked to the Chief of Police? I, yeah, but I talked to him, I, I still talked to him three times a week. Okay, I don't but know did if you I talk to him about Bailey doing drugs? I may have mentioned it when he came to us, to Rankins came to us, and said, look, I had a special request from Mr. Bailey to, to, uh, uh, to run our backgrounds under David. Is that the name of your yeah. search program? Well, not mine, but the state's. Yeah. Right. Under David, he wanted each one of our backgrounds run, me, Andy Anderson. That's, that's, driver's license. that's only driver's license. Yeah. Oh, is it? He wanted, he wanted all our backgrounds done. It's uh, like criminal history and CIC. Sure. So and and he went and, and Rankins came to us privately and said, Look, I had to tell the councilman he couldn't do this and I, that's what I think I told him or may have told him. You know, I he was accused of doing X. I reported immediately to uh, Jason West. Uh, see I, if there's a cross with the chief, why don't you just go and meet up the chief right there and go and he He's the top law enforcement. When Chris Hammer came okay. to me and told me his kid was arrested mm -hmm. uh, for drugs and he was implicating another home for words, I kept my mouth shut. You know what? Who was that? Uh, who was the person who was talking about was doing drugs? Uh, Christ. I kept my mouth shut because we have operatives in the field that whose lives depend on me keeping my mouth shut. So I don't, I don't talk to a lot of people. What do you mean by that? I have guys undercover. Undercover in what? And in law enforcement. That you that Not me personally, but I understand law enforcement. Okay, but the way you just said it, I have operatives. Right. What, what do you mean by that? Like, the operatives that do things at your direction? No. That report no. to you? So when you say, I have operatives, you just mean collectively the city of Palm Bay? The city of Palm Bay Police Department and the, and the drug guys, the drug yeah. cops, they have guys uh, that go undercover to buy yes. drugs and things like that. But you have involvement in that? Or no. Okay. But I, I have knowledge. Okay. And, and uh, because of meetings I sit in and stuff like that. And one thing that I learned very quickly when you're dealing with those types of things is when you got guys that are in deep cover, and I'm not being melodramatic, I'm saying these guys are. Yeah. Their hair's down to here, their beards. Gotcha. Um, um, you, the last thing you do is talk. You don't, you don't have discussions like that. These are discussions we have. So when Hammer told me that Price Act was involved, I shut up, I shut down, I let Greg know. He's my boss. And you did this to protect under I didn't know if we had somebody undercover or not, is what I'm telling you. But you're saying you wouldn't tell the police chief about it because the undercover police? I feel like his kid, yeah, his kid was already busted at that point. So why did you tell Mark? The, the I don't know how you got on that. Uh, Oh, let me, let me back up. I'm, I'm having a brain fart now. That's fine. Uh, I don't, I, I think, I, I believe I told Mark that, that there was an issue with uh, Bailey. I believe I did. I can't recall. I know I told Greg, and uh, and I, I reported to Jason West. Do you remember, did you report it to the sheriff's office before or after you talked to him? Do you have a, a recollection that you called the sheriff's office first and then Rankins was angry yeah. at you and you had an argument about it? No. Okay. Never argued with Mark, no. Okay. So if people overheard this argument, then they're, you maybe discuss 
discussing something heated about something else? Do you recall? I've never argued with Mark in my life. Anybody that says otherwise. Okay. Um, back to uh, Aguilar and Buchanan wanting to install cameras. Because that was Steve's property. place now at this point. Um, that was owned by Aguilar. Yes. Correct? Okay, and this is the same place the pool table is at. Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. Um, so the plan to install cameras, was that, um, was the purpose of doing that to use it against Bailey to get him in line with nope. how other people well, want to vote? Well, I, I think this is kind of getting skewed. Someone suggested that he just was there listening, right. as far as I understand this, and did not participate, did not nope. approve, did not deny, just listen. Okay, well that's, that, that's, that's your yeah. understanding. And of then he was out of it. Yeah, we have evidence to the contrary. Okay. So okay. I'm Good. just trying to get your side of that. So there was a discussion. I immediately, I had an option. I was at an ethical dilemma in my life. I could go down this path and do the wrong thing. I go down this path and do the right thing. Okay. I chose to call Jason West the next morning, detective. Okay, well prior to that, when you're at this juncture of ethical dilemmas, did you engage in discussions where you were actively involved in planning to install no. these cameras? Not that I don't recall ever having a discussion to actively. Did you agree to pay for a portion of the cameras? No, I don't. I don't recall. I, I, I recall this conversation happened. You had a bunch of guys sitting around having a few beers, smoking cigars. So you don't recall saying, um, "I'll put in fifty dollars." No, I don't recall saying that. Do you recall? I, I may have said it, but I don't recall. But because Joe wanted the video cameras of his or of his building, because he didn't want the drug use in his building, or or any other thing going wrong in his building, Stu. <coughs> facilitated that. The student was the one that brought that. Well, what we get them on camera, we got this, we got this. Okay. And then did you send Stuart Buchanan an email with a link of where to buy cameras? Yeah, but we were talking about uh, cameras at his, uh, uh, I believe to the best of my knowledge, that we were talking that he had cameras at his counter. And uh, he had issues at his counter with his per permit account. Mm -hmm. and we were at the same time this camera discussion is going on, the city had a camera discussion going okay, on. So you're saying it's just coincidence that they're talking about installing cameras to catch Bailey doing drugs, and you send Stuart Buchanan a link to buy cameras, and it's just coincidence that it's in the same, these cameras need yeah. to be installed in the city? I, I'm not saying it's, I'm saying, look, here's, here's, here's the issue that you have, Stuart. And, and uh, I don't even recall that email, but I, I, I believe that you got it. Uh, here's the issue that you have, and we and maybe that generated the idea of maybe that we get Joe video cameras for his place okay, because so he didn't want drugs being used on. His okay, place. so then you agreeing to throw in fifty dollars to pay for the cameras were those the one for the city or no? Or that would have been if I agreed to do that, mm -hmm. and I don't recall me agreeing to do. I truly don't, guys. You're talking about a ten minute conversation three years ago, maybe. I don't agree. I, I would have said, yeah, I'll kick in. Joe wants to by video cameras. He's done me a favor by storing his pool table this whole time. For the purpose of catching Bailey doing drugs no. on camera. He didn't want drugs used in his place at all, and he didn't want drug uh, uh, women coming in and out and going, coming and going out. Okay. So were the purpose of the cameras also to record council members having sex with? No. Oh, no. <laughs> it, you're talking about training now. Yeah, let's, be, let's call it what it is. Guys. Okay, well, I don't. Because you guys well, are asking way in the way. What, what I know, I want to know what, what you know about these things. Steve Buchanan again came to me and said that Trey was stepping out on his way. I'm very close to Trey. An ethical dilemma again. The camera thing comes up. Well, if we get cameras, we can do this. And then we do this. We do this. At the beginning, I said, you know what? I'll throw money into it. But then, I, ethical dilemma again. I go down the path, the right path. I, call, I called Trey up, I sat down with him, took him to the American Legion, and I talked to him about him and his family. He was talking about his girlfriend moving out from South Carolina. They were going to get together. He was going to leave Ashley, the kids, all this other stuff. I talked to him for four hours one night at the mm -hmm. American Legion. And, and he was in a train wreck. He was a train wreck. He was leaving his wife. He was done. And, and we talked several times since then. Uh, now, cameras ever get installed? No. But I wouldn't have anything to do with it. I did the right thing when the right time came. 
but but you did agree to throw in money initially. Not for the purposes of what you're saying. For the purposes of the guy that's building his building for his pool, for our pool table and and helping Stu out. And I don't believe they would have gone into the apartment anyway. He just wanted it there because he in the main portion of his building. Okay. So if there was a plan to. Uh, secretly videotape Trey Fulton having sexual liaisons with people in Jose Aguilar's property. Who's Jose Aguilar? Joe Aguilar. Joe Aguilar, I'm sorry. sorry. You're right, who's Jose Aguilar. I don't recall the conversation that okay. we, that it was a plan, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll tell you if I did. I, I don't recall. I will tell you. Okay. Well, we, have, we have evidence evidence to the contrary, so okay. that's why I'm asking you, because it doesn't But, but I truly, good. I truly don't recall that, uh, that, that conversation in that detail. I mean, it may have been, we may have talked about it. I mentioned it to you uh, when, I, when we first sat down, okay. that this may be an issue, but I thought you guys were going down a whole different path. Well, Are you, you aware know, of anybody else trying to blackmail you? Uh, Gathering evidence on you? Are you aware of any of that? Sure. That, like what? What are you aware of? You don't think my background's been scrutinized to the hill? No, but we're, we're, you know, we're more worried so about people trying to um, threaten or extort people to get certain things done oh, no. in, in government. Not, you're not aware of anything like that? Oh, I thought you meant like the, all the, the bloggers on Facebook. No, 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 no. I'm asking, are you aware of anybody that's trying, that is it's going after me? No. You, you're not personally aware of anybody. Nobody's well, that, that, that. that's other than the uh, newspaper. Okay. Yeah. No, we, okay. we mean to level like of extortion of black men. No, nobody's trying. Okay, so then were you aware or took part on a plot to, or plan, discussions to blackmail or extort, extort, I can say that word. Thank you. Holton, by videotaping him with prostitutes to use it against him to control his vote in city council. We were in discussion. There was a discussion. It wasn't that detailed, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. Was guys drinking beer and having a cigar. We kicked it around. I did not agree to anything. The only thing I did say is, is that if Joe puts the security cameras in, and I don't recall the conversation, okay. if he puts the size to put it in the outer sections, the outer rooms of the, the place, I would kick in money for it. At that point, I had a dilemma. I went to my wife and sat down with her. I told her what I knew. She said, talk to Trey. He's your friend. Talk to him. I sat down with Trey. I had a long conversation with Trey. He was leaving his life. He was distraught. We sat there, we talked four hours that night at the American Ninja. Dropped him off at home. I had two beer bottles. I dropped him off at home, went home. The next day we talked in again. And then the day after we talked again. And he got through this, this thing with his wife. With his was there talk? There was yeah, there was talk. Guys talk shit when they're drinking beer or smoking cigars. Was yeah. there any action? Who was not? Like what kind of shit? I, I don't recall the exact details. I mean, I, I'm trying. I truly am. Summary of it. What kind uh, of? I, I'm, I'm talking. A bunch of guys are talking crap. Well, you know, the, you know, he's not voting this way. Let's do this. And he's not doing this. Let's do this. Okay. So you know, what's it? Let's do this. Well, let's. Well, we, we. You know, he thinks he's high and mighty. You know. Let's take he, him down. Let's take him down, type of thing. But that's not what. We we never. It was beer and it was it was uh, cigar talk. At the right when it came time to do the right thing, I don't recall that I ever offered to put money in. It wouldn't be unlike me to make that offer. Yeah. Uh, and then what about a, an actual prostitute being selected to um, have a liaison no. with Trey and being put no, on a retainer? I don't know anything. Okay. So you weren't saying you were not present for conversations. I may have been present, but I I wasn't paying attention. But more than one time, we have five guys sitting there talking about crap. Um, well, I don't recall any, any conversation like that. I'm not saying it didn't happen. Okay. I just don't recall it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's possible it happened. Right? Sure. There's a conversation not, about retaining a prostitute to use and to manipulate trade. Did, did, I, I know that I never did that. So it's possible when you, when you say, us guys, you're talking about like you, Mr. Buchanan, Jose, uh, or Joe, yep. were together and at some point may have talked about retaining the services of a call girl to motivate Trey to do some things. Is that no, no. I, 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 guys, I'm, I'm not feeling it. 
I truly not feeling. I, I I don't recall that detail okay, of the conversation. This, this um, binder right here is full of CDs, uh -huh. and they're recordings. Okay. Okay. So they contain some of them. Your statements. Okay. Um, so we're asking you to explain them because they have the content of them is what we've discussed with you okay. right now. Okay. Uh, what you're saying is that I, I said I was going to I was going to hire a prostitute. Well, That's part of a group of people planning to do this, which I mean, here, here's the deal. You know, again, there's there's lots of people saying lots of things. There's lots of uh, statements that have been re recorded and obtained throughout the last two point something years. Right? Yeah. So you know, a lot of times we're asking questions we know. A lot of times we're trying to get some some definition or define point. You know what we're looking for you to say is the truth, and is only the truth. Okay, yeah. and so I don't think I'm lying to you at all. And, and they've well, there's some things that are to me, and I'm not going to get into specifics with okay. you that are that are not jiving with with evidence and information that we've obtained. And I'm just being honest with you because sure. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not a BS or I'm not a fluff your skirt. I'm not not a yes man or any other thing like this. And contrary to maybe what what Trey thinks, this is not the read or interview and interrogation like he may have told you. Um, it's just about talking to you and trying to get to the truth. I, I, I knew you as a circuit judge for many, many years. I've never come to your court and lied to you. I've never gone off and, and tried to say anything. I said I'm not trying to lie to you. But, but I'm going to tell you that when you look at the totality of things, there is some concern for me um, in regards to, to some of the things that we've, we've gathered throughout this investigation. And, and, what we're, and bottom line, too, we're encouraging you to be honest and truthful. But then I'm going to tell you. There's other people that are being honest and truthful that are supported, that the things they're telling us are being supported with evidence. Okay. It's not just about what you say, it's about what, what as you know, can be, can be Well, give me, give me the question that you think that I'm not being truthful. Tell, tell us about some of the issues when it comes to Bailey, because we know a lot more about Bailey and about some, some of the comings and goings uh, about why there was this arrangement made so at Bailey, so I guess let me restate if that's okay. Um, it I'm seems sure. as though Bailey was not um, what it was quoted as towing the line, meaning agreeing to vote in the way that the powers that be, the group, wanted him to. Um, and that in order to motivate him to do that, it was to either convince him to toe the line or to get him out. Mm -hmm. Okay, was there a plan to try to do that to Bailey? Either you toe the line or you get out. Was there discussion? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then did the discussion lead to a plan to use the court of drug use against him? No. No, the plan, I, I told you guys about the video cameras and stuff like that. Instead of Going down that path, I, I called the BCSO sheriff, the deputy sheriff, well, Jason was. Okay. I told him exactly what I told you about the drug use. And, and, and what, and what he, did BCSO do about it? I, I, he said, Dave, if you get more information, I'm going to turn this over to his guys, because he wasn't a vice guy. I'm going to turn it over to my vice guy, and if you get more information, call, you know, uh, I'll give you the guy. You call me back, I'll give you his number. You deal with him directly. Okay. At that point, I let it go. Then what about? Um, plant, planting drugs in no. Bailey's car for the purposes of him getting arrested. Nope. I didn't do that. Okay, you did. S Steve Buchanan. And what did he do? Steve Buchanan said he wiped drugs on the outside of his car and wanted me to get a dog in her to come and smell it. What I did was I called, I told Steve Buchanan, no problem. I called Jason West. I called him. Okay, but when he told us the story the first time, he didn't tell us that piece of it. I, it didn't even occur to me, okay. honest to God, because I'm thinking of... Them it doing didn't occur to you that the city planner is purposely wiping drugs in a city councilman's car? It did not, because you guys are coming at me pretty hard here. Okay, well, nervous. there's a lot of disconcerting things that... Well, ask me the up. question, I'll answer them truthfully. Okay, yeah. Did you tell Jason West about the drugs being wiped on the outside of his car? I don't recall, but you could ask Jason. He would know. I, I believe so. Like I said, they wanted me to use my friend Paul Alfred, who was a dog owner with Melbourne PD at one time, to get a dog owner to go up there and I would do it. I called Jason directly and I said, I don't know how it is. 
on the screen. You say they, who are you referring to? They, they want to do that? Stu. Mm -hmm. uh, she asked me if I knew Paul, and I said I did. Then said they wanted him. Yeah, I mean the crowd. Mm -hmm. Who is this Stu and who else? Stu Buchanan is the one that brought it to my attention. Okay, yeah, when you use they, you were referring to the, the people crowd. that were at the meeting, me, Joe, and Stu. Okay, so they. Then so was Joe and Stu's plan to do this? No, I mean, you know, the, the drugs was definitely Stu's plan. Who was providing the drugs? I don't know. Okay. I can't, they, they told me they got the drugs from the hub on So. Who's they? Stu. But who's they? I mean, Stu said in front of us, he has a contact in Malabar Moves that he can get the drugs. Who's us? Joe. Joe. At any point, did Joe provide drugs no. for this to be done? Okay. I've never seen those drugs. So you guys know, I've never seen the drugs. The but are you aware that Joe provided drugs? No. Joe's never provided drugs mm -hmm. that I've ever seen. Never, ever. Now I know he's got a history, but I've never seen. It. So you have no uh, knowledge that you guys talked about this plan to get Bailey in trouble for drugs. That drugs were provided to plant in Bailey's car for the purposes of getting him fired. But he never said anything about planting anything in his car. We talked about was wiping it on the outside. This is how all I know about. It. Okay. Wiping it on the outside of the vehicle, and me getting the dog handler to come try to sniff it out. I called Jason West instead. That's the truth. Were, weren't you concerned that people were trying to set Bailey up by wiping drugs on his outside? Bailey was doing drugs anyway. Okay, well, <laughs> but if we see just recently in the news, Baltimore police pull people over that they think are bad guys, they don't find drugs, and they throw them in the car, there's a problem with that. Sure. So we think Bailey's doing drugs. He's doing it anyway. Where it's okay with wiping no, his car? No, it's not. It's not okay. That's why I called Jason uh, West. I, I called. Well, if I told you Jason West doesn't recall anything whatsoever uh, about you mentioning wiping of drugs or anything I know. else like that, that someone is driving around with pills inside their car versus cocaine. Those are two different, completely different stories. That's why we're asking this thing. Well. So, did, so you, did you talk to did Jason? Did you tell him that you that there were drugs wiped on the on the outside? I don't or recall. Did you him tell him? I, I can only recall what I can recall. Mm -hmm. I, my conversation with him was five minutes. He told me that he would uh, he would pass it on to his vice guys. If I had any more information to call him. He, he didn't think I had enough to go on right there. Anymore. So Joe being involved in these conversations. Um, what is Joe's involvement in Palm Bay government actions? Why is Joe in these conversations? Joe, Joe was Mayor Capote's campaign guy okay. at the very beginning. And, and so that's how I met Joe. It's through politics. I, I worked on Maziotti's campaign. Joe worked on Capote's campaign. Capote beat Maziotti. Mm -hmm. Me and Joe decided to put our heads together and get a council that we can try to run people, that we can get the roads and the infrastructure fixed in the city. Okay, and part of that plan was to get people fired for using no. drugs and putting cameras and secretly those, reporting them? Those were, those were, those were guys talking shit that did nothing. That's all that is. Guys talking a bunch of crap and did nothing. And both times, when they tried to record or they wanted to record, or we tried to record, let's just be honest, we tried to record Trey, or going to record Trey messing around. What I did was I went and sat down with Trey and I talked to him. Okay, so you did try to record. No, you I did talk about trying to record Trey messing around. There was a discussion of it. I don't recall the exact verbiage of the discussion. Was I a part of it? Yes. I was, I was part of the discussion. I don't recall the details. And when we, meaning Joe, me, and Stuart, we had the discussion of, uh, of, the, of, of Bailey. I called Jason West. Uh, both times I reached out and did the right thing. I went to the individual, and both times nothing happened. Now, I know it's, against, it's probably against the law and a conspiracy, but... but well, what was the purpose of... But it, what my purpose was to make sure Trey didn't leave his family. 
Okay, so you're my purpose was let me, you're, so you're friends with Trey. Very close. You care about him. You care about his marriage. So you're going to videotape him and sexual liaisons with other women to help him. Now the videotape under my my memory now okay. was about the drugs more than it was because Joe didn't want the drugs. In the okay, but a minute ago you said you do recall discussions of videotaping Trey. Videotaping well, Trey. Yeah. What were the purpose of the videotape? Of everything, you know, anything that was going on. So, See, I didn't hang out there. I mean, I, like I said, I was honest when I said I was there four or five, three or four times probably. I didn't even never hang out there. Yeah. I wouldn't want to hang out there because they're trying to videotape you getting stuff against you. Yeah, you guys did a good enough job right there. Yeah. But uh, so, um, yeah, my intent, yeah, did we talk about it? Absolutely. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Did we take any action? No, we didn't. And the reason we didn't take any action is because I was at that dilemma in my life and I had to make a choice. Do I do the right thing or do I do the wrong thing? You say you didn't take any action, but Buchanan tells you he wiped drugs on his car and you called the sheriff's office to have the sheriff's office go look at his car. So that... No, I didn't say have him go look at his car. Okay, so I said it was reported to me by one of the staff member and asked Jason. It came to me on a reliable source that this guy is snorting cocaine and he's buying his stuff from Malibu Post. But Buchanan trying to set Bailey up by wiping drugs on the outside of his car. I think I found that out after when he asked me if I could run the dogs by the school. I think that was a different discussion. I'm sure he got it before. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a different discussion that we had with Buchanan. Mm -hmm. so I don't think that was the initial discussion, to the best of my knowledge. Why would Buchanan even want to do that? I mean, there's no, no real benefit. Cannon Bailey, uh, whereas, let's face it, Joe is, from everything I've heard and read and discovered, the puppeteer of people putting people in places and helping other people put people in places. So why would Stu even give a crap about Bailey? I don't know. You know? I think Stu... I can tell you why Joe would. I think... And you can too, probably, so... I, th I think Stu was... Uh, Stu's a genius. He's a very smart guy in his job. Um, but he's not a very good guy. And he's, and he, uh, I, I, I dealt with Stu all the way up uh, to, uh, you know, with the audits and the CBDG and shit and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I was the one who requested the CBDG audits. I gave him the request of those audits. I called the county. I knew they were going to do it in 2016 and asked them to move it forward. Now, I called Ian to see if he would remember that phone conversation. He says vaguely, but uh, so they moved that audit up forward because I couldn't make head and tails of it. So we actually brought that on ourselves. Stuart, once we identified the issues right after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's in 2015, I asked Stu that in the first two weeks to give me a list of deficiencies in the audit that we got from November uh, to, to fix some of these things. Uh, Stu failed to do, provide for me, so I did it again. I went went to the city manager, request permission. Again, let me not. Okay, okay, I didn't mean to get off in a week. But you asked me about with, Stu. With with when it comes to Bailey and Stu, why? I, I, I don't would know. Go? I don't know. I, I I don't know why. I think you have a good idea. A very 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 very. If very you just good hit me, is it? That it's not a Stu Bailey thing. But if that's the position you want to take, it. Like, is it a Trey Bailey thing? I think you you tell me. I'm not putting words in your mouth, so I'm not going to get get wrapped up in that. You know, I guess let me ask you this: when it, when it comes to you know the whole stew and how, and let's just talk about you and Joe. Sure. Okay. Um, tell me about because it's my understanding you were very very close. Something happened, um, and how would you how would you classify your relationship to Joe right now? We we're not as, we don't meet each other as much because obviously every time you turn a corner you think when you guys were in the back mirror. I mean, uh, have you ever asked anybody if it ran a wire? Yes, absolutely. Why would? Why would you? Yeah. Have you got? I mean, it's because you guys are you guys. Because I'm getting phone calls all over the place God saying, "Hey, they want me to wear a wire, man." That's just, I did just flabbergast me when I would just sit there and I heard that I'm like, I wouldn't care if they if they. And that's what I tell them. Tell them the truth. I would never go on off and go, 
John? I don't recall. How you doing, buddy? Are you wearing a wire today? So, stop it. You knew what I meant. The, the so. point I'm trying to make, uh, and Brad, no disrespect, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you get to a level to where you're getting scrutinized so much by you guys mm -hmm. that everywhere you turn, you don't know what's going on. I mean, did I do something wrong? I'm sure I have. I, I'm sure that I made a mistake. But did I do the right thing at the end of the day? Yes, I did. I, I called the cops when I should have. I, I, Are I, you sure that other people that you're dealing with, and I'm talking from Joe, all, you know, because there's rumors about Stu and all this other stuff, which you know may or may not be, may or may not be accurate. We certainly did get recordings just out of the thin air through uh, long distance recording devices or through you know bugs that are planted in in, in particular places. Uh, we may or may not have. But I'm saying, are you sure that other people that are in this whole thing are doing the same thing for you by trying to do the right thing? I mean, you've got to well, I, I, will, I, I will add to that and <laughs> say, you, you said several times you were at a moral crossroads. A ethical and, dilemma, I think. An so. ethical dilemma. And you had discussions that were maybe going towards a path of, of wrong, let's sure. just say. And ultimately, you're telling us today you decided to go you went to the correct way and didn't follow through on this talk. Um, but I don't, I then, think that you think we were a lot no, no, no. closer to getting to. No, let me finish. Okay. So um, I believe that there are people in, in, in Palm Bay involved in the government that have not made the right choices and have not taken the right path. But you're here, sitting here, telling us the truth to the best of your recollection, and you're in a position of knowledge of some of those people and what they did. Oh. And we could use your help in further evidence of the people who came to the crossroads and took a different path than you did. So you want me to wear a wire? No. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Well, I, I mean, what what specific? Give me a specific thing, and I'll talk. Okay. Because there's there's. What is Joe Aguilar doing in city politics in the city of Palm Bay? Why is he having discussions to try to um, strong arm city councilmen, either videotaping them with prostitutes, planting drugs on them, giving them free housing? Yeah, what is anything, he doing? I don't know anything about the free housing. Okay. But Mayor Capote lived in a house. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yeah. Why? What I, is Joe getting out of this? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, honest to God, okay. and this is what's really funny about Joe. As close as we are, I don't know. I know he owns a bunch of properties. What does Joe do for a living? He's a cattleman. He owns. He's got ninety or maybe a hundred head of uh, cattle in his back eight there, mm -hmm. and he's got horses. How does he make his income? When you sell those cattle, and uh, these are prime cattle, these are uh, bulls. Uh, How to get an exemption out there on Grant Road for that, for exemption. agriculture? Yeah. He's an Aggie. I know, so didn't he, didn't he have to petition for that? Sure. I went to the petition with him because he never went through the process before. He asked me to, I went. Mm -hmm. uh, but so did Steve Buchanan, so did our, the county guy who approved it. There wasn't anything shady there. Yeah. Um, I can guarantee you that because th there's a there's a magistrate. I think he's a magistrate. He's somebody that oversees it from the from the clerks uh, from the. Um, is that Caps? This is Stuart Caps. He's a black dude. I can't remember his name. No, older black dude. No. But anyway, and he asked the questions. What are you doing on your property? And uh, Joe just asked me to go because I knew this for a while. Um, and well, he's not even in the city of Palm Getting him to what she was I'm asking. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So they, there's a discussion about potential videotaping. You decide that you're going to take the high road and right. you call the police. Did that topic ever come up again and did you tell them you were disassociating yourself and yes. or did you advise that you had called someone in law? No, I, I didn't advise those guys. <coughs> I didn't tell those guys. As a matter of fact, I just let him talk because I already told the cops. I, I, you don't want to be the guy that sends her and says, oh, well, I Wasn't it this. part of your plan, your collective plan, for you to call the cops for the purposes of them finding the drugs on Bailey that had been planted? I called the cops in lieu of getting video or planting any drugs. Or any, I called the cop in short order, very, very short order. Uh, 
and I'm sure you have talked to Jason already, and he's already confirmed that I called and asked him, or told him. I, I believe that the wiping down of the van thing came later. I don't recall. That's, I truly don't recall, guys. I'm trying to be, be my best, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And was there talk? Yeah, there was, because I'm new to go I'm new to this level of government. There's a lot of things going on at once. But you've been around a long time. I've been time, around a long time. You know that it's not. I don't know that it's, it's wrong unless you do it wrong. To say, oh, we didn't know it was wrong to talk about. Talk shit and have beers. Our, you never talk shit and have beers. No, but Dave, don't don't please don't sit there and say like you're naive and you don't know. I mean, you're Andy Anderson's chief of staff. Chief of staff for a while. Your wife's involved in politics. You know how to manipulate the system. You know how to work the system. You're a smart guy. Don't 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 doubt that. I mean, anybody who goes on there. I mean, is it would, it would you say it would be accurate that at one point you went and represented maybe say this private prison company and present yourself to be someone other than yourself in order to maybe finagle things in your direction? If you know what I'm saying, and I'm not getting for the sake of the recording, I'm not going to come right out and say it. Does that ring a bell? I mean, you're you're a savvy you're a savvy guy. You represented as a lobbyist or as a friend or whatever private companies in the past and you've gone maybe utilizing your boss's name or reputation maybe not criminally I'm not getting that to come I'm saying inappropriate I, I, I don't I, I kind of understand what you're talking about but I'm not sure okay. so I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is you're a smart guy you know how to do this you know how the system works um, I just think that you, you need to be more candid about it and, and, All right. and, and about things because you know what Joe is doing I, I truly, I look at me when I tell you this, Brad. I'm looking at that and I, I truly don't know why that guy gets a bulk of his money. I've never asked. I don't know. I'm asking about the bulk of his money, but what he's involved in. Oh, what he's involved in, I can tell you what he's... If he knew where he got his money, I want to know that too. Right. But, because no one seems to know. Um, but that he's being never. aside, Joe is extremely involved in a bit of a puppet master in Palm Bay politics. And you, for a long time, were at his side for all of this. So you are telling us here that you took the high road. What is what is Joe doing? Why is he trying to control people, own people? According to Joe, Joe owns a lot of property in Palm Bay. Mm -hmm. He wants he wants to do right by the city. According to Joe, and I asked him pointedly. He wanted to open up a, um, a junkyard. You guys know about that? Yeah, where you, you were going to be a partner in that. Right, but when I got the job in the city, obviously I couldn't do that. Okay, but after you got the job with the city, you still were involved in planning a partnership to open up a scrapyard slash junkyard. We, him and I talked about it. And, and I, you went looking for property to purchase. Oh, oh we, I think we drove out to the compound. Mm -hmm. But I don't, but the, the compound you can't develop because there's no anonymity's out there. Okay, but you did, no did discuss, you had plans to open a, a scrapyard with Joe jointly, and you looked at property, and you talked about how to get the zoning change. Right. Okay. Right, and it had to go before council. At that point, though, there came a point where I had to make a decision. Well, am I going to be a partner in this or not? I made the right decision, again. I came out, and I said, no, I can't be a partner of this. I can't. Why? Because that there's a conflict of interest with okay. me and the city. But you go as far as planning, <coughs> looking at property, talking about how to get the zoning changed, talking Getting about a legal opinion where, the, car, where I the cars were going to come from, that you would even take stolen cars. No, all this is discussed. No, never, never okay, well, one car, stolen car discussed in front of me. Okay. Well, cars without paper to me no, is stolen. He said he he told me that he wanted a better relationship with the sheriff so that he could get the cars, the impounded cars, that people didn't play and sheriffs all over in Central Florida because there was big money into that. I said, okay. Okay, so you're planning all of this though while you're We're talking about it. Okay, well you're driving around looking at property. We drive around all the time. With Joe, looking at property to purchase oh. together and it's just, just, just talk? But, but the thing is, is when, when it came down to where the rubber met the road, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't do it. I, I talked to him about building a junkyard. You know how much money's in salvage? Huge dollars in yeah, salvage. Yeah, so then why didn't you do it? Because it was a conflict of interest, Bridget. Okay. So you can go and plan it and help to get the zoning change oh, by no. the city council vote. I didn't I didn't whip those votes for that. Okay. I no Joe had to go whip those votes from that himself. Okay, and then so Joe does this by threatening people with no. we're gonna expose your drug usage, we're gonna expose your prostitution usage, we're gonna give you a free no. house. No. 
Who told you? Where does this free house come from? He let, you just said he let Capote live in it. One of oh, no, I keep, I'm sorry. Yeah, he did. He, well, at least that's what he told me. And then he said he paid his bills. Okay. And then why is Joe paying for the mayor's bills and to live in a house for free? That's between those two. I truly don't know. I asked him the same question. Okay. Well, that's because he wants to own his boat, and he does. He doesn't own it. Because him and the mayor have been on the outs for months. Okay. Well, why, what would be his motivation to do that? <clears throat> I don't know, because the mayor never lives up to his word. So, I, I mean, I don't, I, I can't, I, that's, a, that's a good question. I you truly, never asked yourself that question? I've asked, I've asked myself the question is, how much weight does Joe pull with the mayor? And the question's always been, about 50% of the time, the mayor will vote his way. Because the mayor's not reliable. He doesn't vote the way he, he just doesn't. He votes his own way. The, the, I'll give you an example. The, uh, the uh, fees that we just got approved, the uh, assessment fees for the stormwater assessment. Mm -hmm. The mayor was fully behind that for years. The second he saw there was a three, two vote and he could walk, he could vote in the dissension, he voted in the dissension. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And here's a guy that voted for it every single time it came up and failed. Now the one time it's going to pass, he votes against it. You can't predict these guys. So he, you think that, that Joe owns the mayor? Nobody owns Well, Joe, Joe mm -hmm. said, tells people he owns the mayor. And Joe mm -hmm. gives the mayor a free place to live and a free car. Right? Pay his electricity, but that's what Joe told me. Yeah. You guys ever had conversations about pending votes and all of you talking about, I've, we've got this guy, we've got this guy, we've got this guy. You mean, what do you mean you guys? Well, I'm talking about you. Joe, uh, Stewart, other people, Trey, uh, group, ever been collectively together and talked about having pending stuff on for the city done. Mm -hmm. you've got this person's vote, this person's vote, that person's vote. That you was some, you know the answer. It's not that hard, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. We have, but not like you think. What we do is we go, when I go whip a vote, let's say I'm going to go whip two, two separate votes. Mm -hmm. And, and let's say we want to get X accomplished as a staff. I'll go to you and I'll tell you the pros and cons of what we were trying to accomplish. Then I will go to you and be, brief you on the same thing. Now, if I know I have you two and I need him, I go to him and tell him the same thing. Okay, the, but I don't lie to you guys. What about, I go by what about the topics that are specific to Joe and Joe sitting there saying, with, with in conjunction with other people there, saying, hey, uh, how are we doing on this one? We've got this guy's vote, we've got this guy's vote, we've got this guy's vote. Uh -huh. Where you've got a private private person in front of public officials already saying- How many times did Joe have issues before council just to, just to talk to him? No, there's, there's things that he's been involved in, you know, that other than just just the things with variances, and scrap yard, uh, and different scrap yard things. Is and different one. And different things. No, there were, there were many, many other things throughout the time period that this has been ongoing. Uh, well, I mean, to, you know, any grown adult uh, a cattleman who has more money than a cattleman should and no one knows where it's from is giving city council, people on city council things for free, planning to use things against them, they're doing it for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that reason's got to be I, I, to I, benefit I, themselves. I would agree that that would be the, the logical way. I don't know that reason. I truly don't. I, I agree with you that there, there's got to be some sort of logic to what you're saying. Did Joe contributed to your wife's campaign? I don't know. I think he wrote a $500 check. Who else is he? I don't know. Did Joe ever contributed to the campaign? Lincoln doesn't have a question. Tell me about his campaign. <laughs> um, he's running for city manager. Uh, uh, Santiago. Um, then then uh, Santiago's campaign. I don't know. I know I was very involved in Paris, you know, but, but I wasn't his treasurer. And you don't know if I don't I don't know off the top of my head whether or not he's he's contributed. I truly don't. Now have I asked him? Well, here, here's a, another that public does, he, does he contribute to both candidates competing for a seat? Do you know? Problem. Are, are you from the, are Joe Aguilar giving cash contributions that wouldn't be reported because they're outside the... I never saw him do that. Okay, but are you aware of it? No. 
I've never seen him do that. Well, yeah, I, okay. You never I, seen him do you answer that question, the question of are you aware of it? I am not aware. I have I heard things? Absolutely. Yes. What have you heard? I've heard that that's what he does. He gives private he gives cash donations. He's never done it to my wife. My wife is a stickler for that shit. She okay. doesn't talk. So who have you heard he's giving cash donations to? I, I just does he do it? Yes. But I don't know. I mean, this is what I've heard. Okay. I don't never seen him do it. Is it a possibility he does do it? From what I heard, he does. But there's a lot of guys out there that do that. I mean, there's tons of people that do that. Like who? Okay. Happens all the time. Like who? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say go down the list of things. It happens all the time. Why not? Why don't you go down the thing? You're an honorable person who's a city official. I'd be like, boom, 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 boom. Here's here's. If people are making illegal campaign contributions in cash, then those people need to be brought to light because this system should be a straight up system it should where be. the people are voted for John Smith. John Smith is the person who makes the decision. It should, it should, so be absolutely it should right. offend you. You should just it pop that right off, David. It, tell me every single one of them that you know they're making cash. It, and I can tell you that it happens with builders all the time. They make cash donations or they try to bribe people. Like who? I don't, I, I, I can't think of one right Coy? off the top. How about Coy Clark? Never. Never. Corey Clark wrote a check to my wife, and then my wife is such a stickler with that, she won't let anybody touch her campaign. Nobody. Uh, as a matter of fact, she would uh, take more than $50 from a stupid kid, because over 100 I think, he got out. What about um, Mo Allen? Dave Mo Allen? Did he donate to my wife? I'm just saying, does he does offer he bribes or give people more money than he's supposed to? No. What about Jeffries? Yeah. In my opinion, yes. But PK. PK, no. PK Ryan is West. Just, uh, Ryan West, no, probably not. Yeah, that's thanks. I mean, give, uh, if you get given to me, I'll say, yeah, that guy would do it. No, he wouldn't. But it, it's, I've seen it happen before. Not, I've just heard, you know, not seen it physically, but heard that it's happened before in a campaign where people want to donate money. And then they donate the max allowable, and then they donate the rest in cash, and the person gives themselves the cash. The cash. Uh, uh, would advance. it be would it be inaccurate to say that you were present at one point uh, when Joe had a lot of cash that he dispersed? And I'm not going to go into particulars about it um, because this were you present when Joe dispersed a decent amount of cash? I have never seen Joe disperse any money and that's the God's honest truth. Personally. I've never seen it. Why do you say personally? Because who else, who else because, has seen that? because I've heard that it's happened, not with Joe, but not just with Joe but with other people. Who have you heard that from? With regarding Joe. Steve? Who else? That's it. And with other people. Ben Jeffries. It was his first cash donations to the campaign. So how did you learn about that? I don't know. You hear things in the trenches all the time. Is there times that Ben Jeffries has have given kickbacks or bribes for votes to go his way to well, I've always, projects? And, and this, geez, I hate to say anything because you guys take it down the path of darkness right away. Uh, well, we investigate I, I know, crime. I know, I know guys. I, it's, let me tell you, when Ben Jeffries decided to donate to my wife's campaign, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, uh, I quit going to meetings because, what, what you know, because he's, you know, he's building by the energy. It's an emerald, emerald city. city. I quit going to meetings, and, and when Leo bothered him, I imagine his name's come up in here. When, when he had his issue, I quit going to meetings with him. I've been here my whole life. I know tons of people here. So, so for me to, to sit here and say, well, you know, uh, so, uh, so and so is, uh, do I suspect because I have experience in campaign that they Fox supported Mayor Picotin, uh, and, and, and because I know the signs of how campaigns work, no pun intended to sign. Mm -hmm. But I know how all that works and where the money comes from, and for him to raise the amount of money that he had 
and, and accomplish the things that he did? Is there a possibility that there was cash injection into that campaign? I can sit back and I say, I can assess the and say, yes, there's, there's soft money in that campaign. Otherwise known as illegal contributions. Right. Where we, where we come from. That's and then what about... Soft Jeff? sounds so pretty, but uh -huh. it's not. Well, I mean, I think you could ride around with your truck, on your truck, and hand paint and sign as long as it's under 100 bucks and say, yeah. and say, vote for Christine's daughter, she's the best thing since last year. I can't do that because I'm not Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? That's, I like that's my truck. Then. What about, <laughs> what about Jeffrey's um, giving kickbacks or bribes to public officials to make a vote go his way to support? Never. Never to me. Okay, but what about you? I never heard of it. You never heard of that? I, this is what I suspect. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to put it on the table. Is this ever going to go public? Is it public? Um, I mean, I guess your attorney can advise you that better than me. I mean, any, you know, at some point, if a case were to go to trial, we have certain discovery obligations, but that things may have been turned over as far as going public would only be. This is what I'm very hesitant okay. to tell you guys because of, of, uh, of the, uh, the video, but because I don't want to falsely accuse somebody. But no. I, I strongly suspect, mm -hmm. I strongly suspect that in order for Ben Jeffries, a couple of things happen. You want to go down this road, John? I mean, I haven't talked well, to you for well, well, the, the, the road is in front of you, and it uh, looks clear. And all I can say is uh, what, what, what you perceive, I would lay it all out. Because this is some pretty damaged shit. Um, okay. Is it damning shit about, about you? Well, I mean, because I've had knowledge and I haven't heard it, probably. Or at least I suspect. Okay. I mean, I'm not your attorney, so I'll, I'll let you finish. Uh, Colonel, I apologize. But, John. Judge. Agent. <laughs> okay. Here's what, I, here's what I think happened. A while ago, Ben Jeffries purchased property up, in, up by the Northern Interchange. And, and I know you guys are busy, so I'll make it quick. No, we have all the time in the world. Gee, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so he purchased his property way up north by the North near the Interchange. Now, the common sense of the place for that interchange to happen is at 95 and Nickel. You guys agree? Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's a mile north? I, because I Jeffries owned the property? That's right. Ben Jeffries with the boats five, six years ago, more and longer than that. And, and for these guys to, to move the interchange way up here, it would save millions of dollars if you would have had the interchange down here. And then, and then what did Jeffries have to do to make that happen? I don't. I, at that time, my wife was on council. He never would have coached my wife. My wife's a straight shooter. She is, she is, she is as clean as the um, so Ben, Ben moves the interchange up here. That costs us millions and more dollars. I believe, and my this is my professional opinion, that somehow Ben worked a deal to make that happen, and somebody got paid at the end because that's millions of dollars. Now, that if you go down, if you guys look at a little draw here. This is 95. This is Nickel Road. This is the new interchange. This goes to Babcock. Now, if you look, this they, they want to take this thing all the way and go like this around the city. Why do you think that is? Because Ben Jeffries owns his property out here. Who else owns his property out there? Andy Machado owns property here. Who else that's involved in politics that owns property out there? I'm on Jason Jason Steele? And who else? They're killing me, man. They're getting warmer, 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 but they're in politics and they're elected. I want to keep going. Don't make me be the only one doing the research for no reason. I mean, I'm not the only one that, or not, but I'm not so sure that for no reason. Either. Don't make it. Who else? I'm not. Let me think. Think of where the property goes. Think about parcels that are going to be one parcel out, not just for all the other ones are out. It'll be affected at some point. Who could think of that? I don't want to find out if you're in politics, but there's a lot of money being thrown around, and you allegedly are not getting any of it, my friend. I am not getting a dime. So, okay. <laughs>
I never I took a freaking dime from anybody in my I, life. I wasn't in for it. Right. Uh, treat so. it like it's loaded. That's right. <laughs> Apologize, but I just don't know. Use that one with my kids. That's no need to. No need to. So continue. I'm sorry. Just I, tell me who that is. I, I don't know. So the interchange has changed. So the right. interchange. Honestly, the city had stuck with a bill that they weren't uh, that was that someone else was obliged to uh, take under their wing. Um, continue. So now this portion of the interchange is going to be done by 2019. But remember, it was it was on the shelf with dust on it when we when our administration came to be. Uh, we put Steve Buchanan on. Like I said, he's genius at his job. He just he's just a bad man. Cannot speak. He just, he does he's great at one thing, but he's not good at other things. Uh, and and um, and so we could save one point five million dollars by dogleading this thing around and coming this way. That would benefit Andy Machado, which is not a bad thing. I, I mean, it's going to benefit somebody, mm -hmm. and not Ben Jeffries. Ben Jeffries found out about this, and all of a sudden the plan has changed and moved the thing back around this way. And When's that going to be voted on? It's already voted. And who voted for it in the city council? I think it went five on And that's, do you have to understand, that's $1.5 million. Mm -hmm. That the city could save itself by going this way. Mm -hmm. Now I know trade, I know, uh, I know, uh, Greg is trying to revisit that. But once that you make that commitment and those guys get builders on board, it's very difficult to move back because these guys now have a lot of investments in there and you can't strip those investors of building those properties. So, and that's where I think that tie in with Ben Jeffries and how that will happen. Because I looked at that and I said, why in God's name would they can, now at this point, Steve Buchanan doesn't belong to me anymore. Mm -hmm. He belongs to Greg. So I don't know about all this going on at, the time, at this time. Uh, so, um, and then until it comes up for a vote, and I look at it and I say, wow, we're not even going down that path. You know, something that sparked an interest in me. And I know Greg had nothing to do with anything. I believe that this issue was pushed, was brought up by the mayor and pushed by the mayor through Ben Jeffries, because the mayor continuously has private meetings with builders and, and things that he shouldn't have. I mean, he's against our charter. He needs to talk to when there, whether there's a policy. He's over the people. Right. But it's against, I'm allowed to go talk, meet with a private contractor and represent the city. I've done that several times. There's nothing, I've driven contractors around our city. And I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, all around the city and told them, you know, look, this, this area's going to come, introduce them to the compound. We cleaned up the compound. We've done all that. Stuff that you guys don't really care about. But, but the, but the, the thing is, is, is the mayor, when he meets with somebody that's going to do business with the city, and there's a policy issue, he has to incorporate staff so the staff can, you know, do what, do what they're supposed to be doing. You know, the mayor can meet with anybody he wants to, obviously. But when he meets with them and establishes policy and then takes it to the board without letting us know, how are we supposed to implement his policy? We don't, we don't know, find out about it until the night. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very frustrating. And the relationship with the mayor and the city manager right now is very strange. So you know, you've seen that. Yeah. That's the only person I can think of that that really raised the red flag with me. But you know, that was this thing insane. <laughs> about water. Yep. You want yes. water? Yeah. Yes. Do you have access water here? Yes. No, no. Let's take a break. We do not no have cigars, cigars but we do have water. We stop doing those things. Mm -hmm. Between that and. But if you want the restroom, it is out the store and to the left to the right. We'll get some water. I'd say I offer you some privacy, but I'm sure there's listening here somewhere, so you stay in here and do any good. And I'm do you think they turn the recorder off? No, I thought it was highly.
Oh, thank you so much. I only have one big cup. This is filtered water, by the way. I only have one big cup left. I still drink out of the hose, man. I got you the smaller cup. Uh, I will be right back. And let's prop this door because it is just sticky. Okay. The, the, um, <coughs> normally, they're sweating me. <laughs> <laughs> the air handling in this building is... My office is so cool to have a blanket and an old jacket. And, and it is hot. Okay. Well, um... We'll be right back. Here. Oh, go ahead. What's that? There's a handicap bar right there. Oh, that right. is... Is that what you uh, handcuff That would be if to? we had to restrain someone we could, and leave the room we could. Um, okay. I can't say I've seen it used, but uh. it's there, should we need it. <laughs> This whole thing is my name. Being on the subject matter of uh, this investigation? Oh. You I mean, I beer so would. Yeah. But um, whatever was being investigated, because the subpoena has the year 2014, and you pointed out, it's been going on a lot. So why are they just asking me now? I don't get that. Why are we just talking about? Wait, I don't know. That's not a question to ask me. Mm. That's a question. What time is it? Um, 12.15. So. been fighting with the clerk all week over this frickin' probate, right? And they wouldn't give us a case number. Well, we got our case number today. And it's a homeless guy who inherited a bunch of money right before his demise, about a oh. year before his demise. Well, when he got it, he came to my office and uh, did a state planning document. And a veteran crew gets his house that he bought and all his money. Well, it's no, it was good that he did that. Mm -hmm. Now, he claimed to be a veteran, mm -hmm. but with me, he never authenticated. And, um, you know, I, it's not my business. You know, but I did mention that, and apparently the lady 
ends up with screw got at odds with him, but he never came back to change his documents. But I don't think he was even in the service. He just because he was a homeless guy out in the woods so long and he dealt with so many other, you know, vets along the way, he developed that persona. So he was in my mind a poser. <coughs> what do we take just to get off all, all this stuff here? Um, for you to get it, or for me to get it, mm -hmm. or there'd have to be a criminal case. Well, it looks like they're going down that path, isn't it? Well, the question is, against whom? Right. Marty celebrate his birthday. <laughs> That's uh, Facebook. So why didn't that appear yesterday? My birthday's today. Oh, it's today? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right on his timeline. You know, you're giving me enough birthday love right now. Yeah. Big wishes on the Gosh, you freak, I forget how hot it is to come back in here. That's not bad. Well, it gets hotter with you. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot to say that. Yes. <coughs> That's fine. I, I just, you. I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we have all sorts of people just come off the street that we don't know, but um, I appreciate you. It's still going to be private with that door open. I don't uh, care that well, as long people, as... Yeah, let's, yeah. we can close it. No, 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 no. If, people, if you guys... Hold on. I, I think it would be better for everyone to have the door open. Okay. And okay. anything he says, if they hear a part of it out there, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys, where were we? Um, that's for, a good for question. Where do we want to go? <laughs> All right, let's start, well, let's, think, let's start over real quick All right, on two, two issues. Number one, there was discussion, but I'm not going to deny that. Discussions, discussions of what? Discussions of both uh, with Trey Holton and both in the, in the drug thing. I don't, I truly, honest to God, don't recall the exact discussion, how much we had, because I never took it really serious. But I understand it is serious, especially right. now. Yeah. Uh, because my intent was never, ever, ever uh, to go down that path. Initially, maybe it was like, oh, wait a minute. But then I, saw, I thought about it and I said, look, I went down the right path and tried to separate myself from the rest of them. Say that drug drug thing with Trey hold. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, the sex thing with Trey and the drug thing with Bailey. So okay. there were discussions that there took was. place to 
uh, videotape Trey with women and not his not his wife and Bailey doing drugs. Right, but I didn't think I didn't take any of that real serious. Then when they said it, I said I'll throw fifty bucks at. It. But I thought more importantly that Joe was talking about the where the where the outside portion of the apartment was when we were in that level of discussion. Mm -hmm. But you did I, true, offer to pay for part of the video. I, I, I said I would throw fifty bucks at it where the pool table was. Not I didn't think we were no longer talking about that, and that's the truth. Okay. I, I, you know, it clicks in my head. I'm in there taking a leak, and I come back in here and I talk to him. I mean, that's though, because we we hearing from multiple sources about Trey's inclination towards right. frequenting prostitutes. Is that I mean, having issues with illegal substances? I've not heard drugs? that. I, I truly haven't. I, I know that he drinks a lot, but right. I, like I the never, prostitutes. I have heard that. You ever witnessed him with? No, I truly haven't. You know why? Because whenever we were in, if we were in Tallahassee at the same time or together, uh, I wouldn't tolerate. It. I know his wife very well. I would not tolerate, it, and he knows that. So when he did something like that, I was I was on my own that night. You know. Uh, what about Trey facilitating prostitutes for um, state legislatures? I've never heard that. I mean, you know, guys brag, so he may have bragged about it. I've never. Trey's not that big of a failure. You can say, yeah, yeah, but who's Trey aligned with now? <coughs> I, I know he work, does work with Mike Aronopoulos. Right. And who's Aronopoulos lined up with? I mean, some pretty big wood, too. Pretty much everybody and anybody that's involved in politics in sure. a portion of the country. Or sure. the state, for sure. For sure. You know, he's got, he's got so connection with Sarah Huckney, too. So, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, I'm not saying it's the case, I'm not saying it's not the case. What you have, like you say, in the grand schemes of uh, of what we may or may not be looking at um, and investigating. If you think about, if say I was someone in maybe Herodopolis or maybe not Herodopolis, but someone in that position has a lot to lose and maybe political aspiration, and I was to find someone that would be maybe more inclined to do my solicitation of prostitutes for people and maybe some of the other things that, and I'm not saying this is the case in this case, mm -hmm. although it may. I'm just not going to put myself out there like that. But, you know, if you can find someone like Trey to be your perfect fall guy, um, you know, that's, that's <coughs> the, the only thing I know. Those are some of the things that we've, some of the evidence and some of the things we, we may or may not have gathered. And very again, I hate to be vague with the way I'm talking, but there's a reason for that. So. The only thing that Trey ever told me about prostitution, and, and I guess Wakula County is Tallahassee. Is that correct? No, Leon. 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 Yeah. Cool. What's right next? What's right next to the prison? There's, and there's a place where prison system is. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah I mean, Wakula's in that right. area. I'm not I'm pronouncing that right. But. I, Trey told me that there was a they were the escort services, like ten escort services in the next county, you know, mm -hmm. and that uh, that uh, he would, and there was party houses and stuff that they, they would frequent in the next county. You know. And they being him. Him and whoever his clients were, or whoever was taking them. Did he um, mention that he no. was paying for him? Or? Nope, he never mentioned he was paying for him. Never. I told him I disapproved of that. Matter of fact, I told Trey to stay out of the strip clubs. Because he's, I mean, the guy lives in strip clubs. Well, and, how and does he imagine to further his political career? I don't, I don't know. I sat down with him and I had that heart to heart talk with him. I told him to put wow. me on his And I said, look, he got, because, you know, I may be not the greatest guy in the world, but I tell you what, I love my wife. That's good. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't beat my kids. And all my kids are educated. I don't do any of that shit. <coughs> and I want Trey to go down that path because he's a good man. He's got the ability. But instead, Trey's hanging out of pinups. I know. And that bothers me. The one thing that I told Trey this, so it's not like I'm ratting on him or anything. I told Trey that the one thing that bothered me that he did through all this whole thing, because all the stuff we throw at me is just. I hadn't even thought of this stuff in a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, you sit and kick yourself and go, what are you looking at here? But the one thing that bothered me about Trey, um, and I told him this, was the fact that he was frequenting pinups with Stu when they were negotiating, when they were negotiating with the city. To purchase the property. To purchase the property. That was, that was really a bad move. What did, what did Trey tell you he said to us about that? I 
I just want to see if he's being honest with you. Because I, he said Andrew Lannon somehow uh, wrote an affidavit to, to, to cover his ass because because uh, uh, he said he was there talking to a lady had a problem with the fence issue or something, and he was and I forget because I asked him this. I told him this months ago, and I said, Trey, it doesn't look good. It doesn't smell right. It's like everything is bad. And I said, I was landing in your seat on his behalf. Signature? Yes. I mean, if he has a problem. I, I, I don't know all the details there, guys. I what concerns do you have about Landon? Landon's a good guy. He's a great guy. But here's a problem I have with Landon. Everything in the sky is falling. He's a young man and he's very smart. But the sky is falling. He told, he told, my city council, I'm on leave right now. Mm -hmm. He told my council that my arrest was imminent. Is that so? Did you ever tell him that? No. Are you going to come to that bar? No. Is the door free? Is the door open? <laughs> Are you free to go? I'll move over if you want to walk out now. You know, he, 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 but that put me on leave. Okay. That put me on leave. Are they paying your leave? Well, no, I'm paying, I'm using my own, no, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get it back. But, but I have what to is Landon's motivation to spread lies? Well, he, he told that to Harry Santiago, he told that to Mayor. Uh, I don't know. And every time that you guys communicated with him, he he blew it up out of, these yeah, are my concerns. Just to be clear, I have never spoken with him, so he, but he. Mm -hmm. I spoke with him. He makes all sorts of representations that I'm not sure where they come and, from. And what happens is, is the city goes in turmoil every time he sends these mass emails out. And, and, and that's, your, that's your attorney, not ours. I, I understand, but you asked me what my concerns about. Yeah. And Can I, we uh, go back to pinups for a moment? Mm -hmm. I mean, not physically. Yeah. Topic it's pretty wise. nasty. Revenge of pinups. Neither do I. Makes two of us. <laughs> well, I, I, and I, I don't know, and I assume it's in the city of Palm Bay. Yes. Okay. It's a I script. Can, is it a wait, script? Wait, wait. I, I, I figured it out from there. All right. <laughs> I, I'm not. I don't remember, but um, it's in there. But um, so pinups. Trey Holton's hanging out at pinups. With Steve, Buchanan. With Steve Buchanan, and the city is in negotiations to purchase the property. Yes. You had concerns about um, that being a wise move on Trey's part. Personally, I sat down and I talked to Trey, and I said, that's not very smart. Okay. What is your understanding or knowledge of um, Trey having dealings with the owner as far as the city paying an, an inflated price for the properties for the owner to get the kickback to Trey? Like Trey operates that way. I know him a lot of years. I don't think he would do that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think he would do that. He may know something I don't. But it, 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 either that or I'm the biggest fool there is. Mm -hmm. you, don't I, th you don't think Trey would take any money uh, as get back to the company? I've never seen Trey take a dollar. I've never seen Trey do anything either. I didn't ask you if you've seen I, him take a Okay. I said, you're telling me that you don't think Trey would be prone to take a kickback from somebody. You, Dave Isnardi, who have known him for a long time, who's smart and savvy politically, is telling me right here under God and oath that you don't think Trey would take a kickback. Now, if you put it like that, maybe there's that possibility, but I don't think that would be it. What would be it then? I, I don't know. I, Trey. Dave, Trey's you are a unique. neat guy, but let me just interrupt you real quick. Bill Clinton could have learned some stuff about song and dance. You know so much more than you're leading on to about, to about people's characters. Ask me a specific so question. I just did. I said, uh, tell, I, I, tell, I, I, me, tell, me, tell me about where Trey has benefited himself financially. This. I know you're prone to cover for Trey, I'm uh, not. but you need to make sure that, they, that, that Trey is prone to cover for you. I, and I'm, others are prone I, I, I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not covering for anybody, honest to God. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. I've never seen Trey take a kickback. Is he prone? Maybe. I, I would think in desperation if he's drunk enough or... Uh, I, I've never seen him take a kickback. I, I've never, I've never <coughs> seen any of these guys take kickbacks. Honest to God. What do you personally know that Trey has done uh, as far as illegal or illicit or immoral things, as far as his character goes, besides the sexual stuff, or, uh, life sexual stuff? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of things that are illegal for a city councilman that you personally know that, that Trey has been? Maybe uh, 
targeting his vote on how he's going to vote on something? Sunshine violation? Explain but, that to me. You know what a sunshine violation is? Okay. Uh, and I don't, I, I've only seen or suspected this one time. Um, and I'm not even sure. I, I mean, it's just hearsay. So you want me to tell you? Okay. okay. Well, it's only hearsay, but I, I did ask what are you personally familiar with. And I know there are instances. Yeah, so if you personally know, tell us you personally know, that's great. If you know hearsay, know. tell us it's hearsay because we can use that investigatively, but we're not going to come back and say. Well, this is all I know, that, that Trey was leaning one direction on one issue, and he had a conversation. Him and Bailey used to go out every single night together. And I had that conversation with Bailey as well, by the way, about marriage. And I took him and his wife out to dinner. I sat down with him, looked them dead in the eye and said, look, you're going to ruin your life. You don't need to go down this path. You're married. You're pregnant. She was pregnant at the time. He said, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to do the right thing. But anyway, him and Trey used to go out all the time. Knowing Bailey and how he votes, and knowing Trey and how he would vote, I understand these guys politically. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I looked at it, and all of a sudden, they're, 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 it's almost like you can choreograph the votes off each other. And I suspected for a while that they were, they were having discussions about certain votes amongst each other. Such as what votes? I, I, I mean, initially when they first got on council, so it was all votes. I mean, they would discuss the meeting out by the way. When you started, you said one issue in particular. And that was, that was one individual in particular that I can think of that Trey would choreograph his votes with. Oh, one they, other individual. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what happened is, is they, as they peeled apart from each other, they, they voted. I mean, Trey would vote opposite of him because he didn't like him. Okay, type of so thing. on the topic of, of Bailey, if Mm -hmm. I was just going to go there myself. Hey, we're finally uh -huh. um, Bailey accepting money from Joe Aguilar. Did he? I don't know. Joe. I truly don't know that. Okay. Joe Aguilar offering to pay Bailey's down payment on a new home. No. You were saying he didn't offer. I, I don't know that he offered, but I never saw that. Okay. Honest to God, I never saw that. Does that surprise you? That would surprise me because Joe has never liked their trusted baby. But has he wanted to control them? I, I think Joe thought he had control over the mayor, and I thought I thought that uh, that. Uh, and when Joe lost control of the mayor, or realized he never had control of the mayor, did he do anything to retaliate against him? Didn't Joe file a lawsuit against the mayor over? An yes. ethics complaint or something? He filed a lawsuit um, over back rent. Was that his wife that filed it? The lawsuit was filed in his wife's name. Ex wife's name. Yeah. Anything else? That but that know? wasn't because of the control thing, because. Well, well, then what was it about? I, I, I don't, Joe, you, you make it sound like Joe sits there and, and, and puppeteers these guys. He doesn't. Well, when, no, show me one benefit that he got from this. <clears throat> I mean, because I have never seen the benefit that Joe got. Okay. Well, I will tell you, Joe does sit there and, and puppeteer, because that's what this is. Sure. Now, what Joe has gotten out of it... I've never seen him get anything. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, I'm telling you the truth. I've never seen Joe... Did the city council uh, vote to rezone a piece of property for the purposes of turning it, Joe turning it into a scrapyard? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then how did Joe get those votes? I didn't whip those votes. I don't know if Joe whipped those votes or not. Okay. <coughs> but it's not Why uncommon for these guys to do land use changes, especially when you're putting a commercial property. Is it beneficial for them? It, that would be hugely beneficial for Joe. That's true. I, I didn't look at it that way. Let's just, let's just stay with that one topic alone for what, what Joe benefits us. <coughs> this even was, go a, into this other was a business that you, that you were in the planning stages of owning with Joe. Man, I'm going to be the truthful as I can with you. Sure. Joe knew early on that once that I went to work for the city, those those business ties were done. Well, that's not true because once you work for the city, you're driving around and Joe's okay. car looking I, at property for not, a business you were going to own together. But not Joe's, not uh, uh, a scrapyard. Yeah, a scrapyard. Yeah. And then I got the legal opinion. I went to Andrew Lane and I talked to him about the business. Check with Andrew. And Andrew told me probably not a good idea. This was much later when it was coming closer. Okay, to the so at some point you decide not right. to do it, but while you're assistant city manager, you Deputy are planning. Manager. Excuse me, 
deputy yeah. city manager, you are planning with Joe to go into business together to the point of driving around looking at properties to purchase the scrapyard, talking about how you're going to get the zoning change. And then the city council votes to change, change the zoning, zoning. Okay. on a piece of land that Joe plans on purchasing, purchasing ultimately from the city. But did, but did, oh no, I didn't know it was from the city until much later. Because okay. we hadn't got to that point yet. Okay, so talk and about I was that already, point. I was already out of the loop then. Dave Mullen was trying to sell him a piece of property. That's the property I okay. uh, when when we first started when I still worked for Andy. Uh, I had to talk with Dave Mullen. Okay, but when after you worked from Andy and you're working for the city of Palm Bay, you're driving around in a car looking at property owned by Mullen to purchase with Joe for the scrapyard. Yes. I've never, never denied that. Okay, but you keep saying, trying to say, well, it was before I worked for the city. Well, it might no, have started, no, no. but it continues while you're okay. working for the city. Okay, so then fast forward, you say you bow out of that plan. Sure. After consulting Lannan. I believe it was Lannan, maybe Pete. Okay, you asked for someone for advice. Right. By the way. But then Joe continues. Joe does continue. And he tries to buy a piece of property that he gets the city council to change the zoning on to heavy industrial. For the scrapyard. For the scrapyard. Yes. But the piece of property is owned by the city, and then he attempts to purchase that property. Ma'am, I did not know about Okay, him but you switching. said you knew about it after. After. Okay, the so fact. when did you find out about it? I don't I don't recall the detail. I truly don't. Okay, but it's a business that you were initially in the planning stages of. We you don't re recall the details. <coughs> it didn't pique your interest that Joe had then gone to do this? No, uh, it obviously did, but I mean, okay. we, you know how much land the city owns? Well, no, no, I'm not talking about how much land the city owns. I'm talking about your former, per, your friend, your potential business partner, sure. then goes and does this and then gets the city council to change these votes and, and buys the city council, buys the city property or attempts to buy the city property. But didn't buy the city property, right? Didn't well, the it. contract's still pending, yeah. as far as I know. No, it, okay. but I, uh, he didn't buy it. Pending. But Joe gets the votes to get the zoning changed. Before um, he yes. it? Yeah, that's that's not uncommon. Well, he has the he has it under contract before right. the votes. Look, I'm a commercial the votes guy. Take place I'm, after right. he has it under contract. Yeah, so if I was going to buy, you know, you're the city guy. If I'm going to buy this property, can I say I'll pay you this price if you change the zoning, and then I'll buy it? What happens if you're a commercial developer like Joe was in this case? You would say, look, I am, I, I'm going under contract contingent on that vote from council. If the vote doesn't go my way, then I, then I can walk away and it stays residential because your intention the whole time is to buy it as a commercial piece. Okay. So that might be legitimate business unless Joe has offered those people something in exchange for their vote or Joe has Good job telling you. I, threatened I think those going, people or extorted those down people. The wrong path. Okay, well, but I have a lot to back up what I'm saying. I, I believe. Okay. But I, I mean, I, and, and just another, just a point of order. If someone's talking, the tape recorder has a tough time recording two voices at the same time. So I just let her ask a question. If you don't want to answer it, you can always say that. Or, I'm sorry, just one at a time. All right. Um, I started with failing on that. That was well, I was going to say, okay. Dave, when you when you are saying that that you find this to be a great mystery and hard to believe and hard to comprehend, and you can't see it, would it be accurate to say that you, Jose or Joe Aguilar, and other people have gathered in social and other environments where even prior to Link being hired, you being hired. Um, a number of other things happening. You and and Joe have talked about this person's going to be here. This person's going to be there. So when you say Joe is not this puppet master, would it be fair to say that you're not being as forthright as you possibly can? Would that be fair? Am to I say? saying? Is it fair to say? Let's just start with this: social, social, or <coughs> otherwise environmental. And were there were all there of discussions? And yes. you made statements saying. This guy's going to be here. Link's going to be a new manager. New no, manager. I, we didn't go that path. Yeah, that way. But let, hear me out. Okay. And I think you'll be satisfied with my answer. Okay. When, when we decided to change the face of city council, see, elections have consequences. Sure. We all know that. 
when we decided to change the face of city council, we, we were upset because of the roads, infrastructures, the, the whole nine yards. There was 20 things we were upset with. So, and I'm a public administrator. I started out law enforcement when I retired from the service from the public administration. Mm -hmm. Now I'm here. Uh, I never worked as a law enforcement officer. I just went through the academy mm -hmm. and decided to go with the politics. So, uh, when we got to this location, to, to this time frame here in 2014, was that when the elections were? Yeah. 2014. Uh, to be honest with you, Bailey came to me and said he wanted to run for my wife's seat. I said, no. I said, you've not proven yourself. You need to work on campaigns so that we can see that you would be definitely proven. We had a lady named Hilda, somebody rather, running for the other seat, and we were going to support her, a group of locals. So we put this group together, a cabal. <laughs> we put this cabal together and because it was like madness for three months when we were running these races. Uh, Trey was running. Trey is a friend of the family. He supported my wife for every election she's ever had. Um, so we supported Trey and for my wife's seat. Hilda, the lady Hilda that was going to run in Bailey's seat against Ken Green, decided to bail in August. So now I had to get him ready and qualified by August 22nd. We worked our ones off, got him qualified, and then we worked very hard and got him, elect, got him both elected. Before that point, we had numerous conversations about who, what needed to change at city. But it wasn't a choreographed thing where it was written on a chalkboard and said, this one's going out, this one's coming in, this one's going out. At the same time now, Greg, who I had worked for mm -hmm. in the past. When you were hired as a lobbyist? Right. Yeah. Uh, when I worked for in the past. So it was a very smart guy and Preston crap out. I mean, we became very good friends before his wife died. And then she passed, he had to move because he had a place in the He had to move back home, take care of his daughter for her last year of school, quit his job, lift off his uh, uh, savings, and, um, and got his kids graduated to college. He loved this place down here so much that he decided to move from home. So this is in the middle of elections. He's actually volunteering on houses. And, you know, and we're really busy at this time. So Greg comes down here and he moves down here, and then he becomes part of the process. Well, the more I found out about this guy, the smarter he is. When, excuse me, when um, there was a there was an ongoing conflict between Alice Passmore and and uh, Andrew Lamb. So now the guys get elected. We go through a recount, several recounts with Jeff Bailey. Remember all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Jeff, Jeff Bailey. Well, Jeff Bailey wins. So now we got Trey. We got Harry, we got Jeff, and uh, uh, oh, Michelle with the podium, Ron. You know, it was with the DZ mm -hmm. Okay, so we got we we hired, we got those people in there. Now we're going to start changing the face of how things are going, and this was our thinking. So we at this point, you did not work for the city. No, ma'am, I didn't work for the city. But you're in here yeah, orchestrating nine. all oh. of this. Not necessarily. I'm not orchestrating anything. Okay, but did We're you did you make promises to people? I will get you elected if you um, choose my friend Greg Link, city manager. Remember, they qualified in August, so Greg didn't even move here until. Okay, something. but you knew Greg. So what's the an I guess if we just get <coughs> to the question, did you tell no, did. make promises to I people? Did. I will get you elected if you choose Greg not. Link, city I did manager. Not. I didn't say that. Did you um, say, Greg Link, I will get you chosen city manager if you hire me? No, I never made that. As a matter of fact, I was very surprised when they offered me to be the city manager. And this is why. Chad Schultz was the only one there with institutional knowledge. I was past moral uh, the, the Dave Watkins growth guy was the bad shit physically. Uh, Elliot Twig was a training rep. I mean, there was no institutional knowledge there. So did, did I told Did you ever Greg, approach anyone else um, besides Greg Link to say, I will get, I will make you city manager if you hire me once you get on? No. Nope. So if anyone has made those statements, then they are they're, lying? They're, that's wrong. I never said that. I was very, very surprised when they offered me to get city manager. Two reasons. Number one, I didn't feel at the time that I was that qualified for it, which wasn't my fortune. The truth was, 
But like any opportunity you get, you look at it and say, okay, I'm going to miss a try. My best. Prior to the election where um, Fulton and Bailey and Santiago, that election in fall of... Santiago was two years ago. Okay. Um, the election in fall of 2014, um, prior to the election, in social settings, did you make assertions and, in, and introduce Greg Link to people as the new city manager of Palm Bay? Anyone's I mean, making statements to us in that regard are not not no. recalling correctly. Not they're not recalling. Sure. They're, they're, they're timing their timing is Okay. Also, oh, did you did you ever say that? Let's yes. Just, let's just take the date. Yes. Anyway, way, but prior to his his appointment, prior to the vote on there, did you ever say, and not just once, but repeatedly say, "This is Greg Blank, this is new city manager." I, I absolutely. Did. But that was when he was competing for the job, and I knew that he was strong, and I knew I was I was working my buns off to try to. Tell us about the voting process and where he was supposed to be placed <coughs> and where he was going to end up. Because if he ended up number one, being basically unqualified for the position, well, it's it not bad. So, well, who's the state? What point? city qualifications do he have? They're the largest city in, in uh, the Ward County. That, that's opinion. Right? Okay, I get that. Okay. But what, what experience does he have considering that other candidates? The question is, though, pertains to there was an orchestrated plan to, as we're told from more than one person, to going off and make sure that he finally ended up as number two. Right. Tell me about that. I, I truly don't recall how that all worked. I will tell you this, I, I lobbied my bones off for him. I went to every single council member and I, and I, I talked him up because he was my friend. I thought that he was, he was a, a senior leader in a, in a half billion dollar corporation. <clears throat> He's done very well for himself over the years. What was his position in the prison company? Uh, he was, uh, uh, when I met him, he was, it was all uh, marketing and sales. Yes. Uh, but, I mean, the relationships that he has to have politically and, and with governments, that was what was important that I thought. And he's a very fiscally conservative guy. Mm -hmm. So I thought that those two good things with good people, so Trump so has never been a politician. Who, who orchestrated the... the him in and up number two intentionally. I, I don't recall I don't recall how that went down. I truly don't, Brad. I'm telling you, I tried to get them to all vote for him. Okay, when so when you were saying you were lobbying on Greg's behalf I'm, because I'm he absolutely. was your friend and, and you believe that he was best for the city. I thought that the private sector guy I had no idea at that point that I would be coming to work for the city. Mm -hmm. I knew that I would eventually come over because Andy would get turned out mm -hmm. and then I, I have, would have a friend, but I have friends in other that did, I could, that um, I would qualify for a job, but not at the level did of that. Did Link pay you for your lobbying no. services? Oh, with the company that he worked for? No, 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 to get, uh, no. To, to whip the votes or whatever no. you call it. Okay, did he... So just, uh, yeah. just excuse me a second. That's probably a bad use of that word, lobby. Okay. okay. So there's probably a better word to describe it. So I went to each council member mm -hmm. and I told them I thought Greg was the best guy for this job. And I told him that, I believe it, I still believe it today. Did you do that, um, was there any, I'll, I'll do this for you if you vote for Gray no. on your behalf. Had you already done something for someone and this was their payback? No. Um, did you start planning your staff when you became assistant city manager? I'm gonna hire this person, I'm gonna hire that person well before you were selected as assistant city manager. We. Me and when Greg got, got selected, we, we started talking about uh, who we needed for parks because that lady was on lead. Okay, well you're saying we, you're still yeah, working for the county. So yeah, I'm how still is working. There a we at this there's, point? Me, there's me and Greg are talking back and forth. Okay, but you're working and for the county, so he's, why? He's my friend. Okay, so you're just planning your friend's job for him? No, he's asking me, he's asking me questions about who was best suited because I know the people here. He's not talking about so him and I, he trusts me. He, him and I have long conversations, two o'clock in the morning sometimes. I mean, we trust each other very much. We're very close. We also get hardened with some brothers, but I mean, that's just the way it is. He, we had discussions, tr Greg and I had discussions on who I thought was best suited for some of the positions that he had before. And I, I, know, I, I told him, I said, you know, Fred Poppy is the best part, guys. The best parks and rec guys are in the county. You ask any park rec person, they'll tell you that. 
I said, if you can get that guy back to the city, it's amazing. Because that lady was leaving. She was over there. Uh, uh, Stu Buchanan, probably one of the most genius growth people I've ever met in my life. I just did not know he was alone. That he was. It seems like Landon's really throwing him under the bus in the media. Is that really warranted? Um, because Stu, Stu's a bad guy. He, Why he, do you say that? Because he's lied on me several times. He went to my boss and lied on me. So he says. He said that uh, uh, I tried to force him to raise money uh, for my wife's campaign. And he said him and Andy heard it. I brought it. And Andy's not a liar. Andy won't lie to anybody. And Andy came in and said, that's not so. Did you ever solicit the campaigns for your wife? Did I ever do that? Yeah, of course. Not on duty, but not at work. And have you ever solicited campaigns on behalf of your wife from companies that are doing business with Palm Bay? And if I did, I walked out of those meetings just like I told you, Ben Jeffries. Ben Jeffries donated to my wife's campaign. You allow the men to go to my wife. Anytime they're in a the room, I walk out. So it would be inaccurate to say that contracts that are currently with Palm Bay that you had gone on behalf of, if so, I was to say that you, you've solicited contracts on behalf of your wife with companies that are doing you know, no. business with Palm Bay. These, these, people, these people donated to my wife. And then they bid, they go through a bid process. I don't sit on bid process anymore. You understand how that works? The purchasing works. Here's what I'm saying. Dave. But yeah, this, it, this is real I'm missing. Here it is. You've got contract. Sure. They've got it. Company X has got that contract already with Bombay. At some point after they have that contract, Dave Isnardi approaches these companies and says, "Hey, I need you to." The call best my, of my call knowledge, because you know we have 500 contracts. To the best of my knowledge, I never approached a company that I knew worked for the city. In one instance that there was a question of, or Stu tried to use as an example, we met at the American Legion, uh, the whole office met there on Friday for happy hour. Uh, Stu introduced me to two guys. They were dressed like, kind of like I am right now. Mm -hmm. Started talking, he goes, where do I know that name? And my wife's signs were all over top. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and he goes, how come I know that name? And I said, probably saw it on the sign that my wife's running for commission. And I said, if you feel, if you want to, you can make a donation, you know. But we'd be more than happy to have you, you know. Then Stu told me the guy's name was Michael Levine, and he was doing business with the front. So I didn't know that at the time. I severed, immediately severed that from him. Well, that, and that's what me and Stu argued about. Because Stu said I, I approached a guy during business hours. I was already had a couple of beers in me. We were talking. He was asking me questions. And I solicited a campaign donation from him at the American Legion. That was the only time that I know that I've ever done that. That answer your question? Yeah, yeah I, I, I find that that is probably not, and there again, I'm not trying to say you're not being forthright or truthful, fully truthful about things, Dave. But there's some really concerning things that I know that you said that are not being fully forthright. Put them on the table. I'm, I, well, I can tell you for one thing, when you talk about your knowledge about the the political maneuvering or whipping of votes um, and make it out like there's no no benefit to the person that's doing the whipping and stuff, I can tell you straight up um, that that there is absolutely ample amount of evidence to prove otherwise. And we're not just talking about, hey, Bridget, did you tell me about how was that? How was that? going to give me $2,000 in cash for my campaign. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about hard, real deal stuff. So I'm, I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of details, Dave. I'm just going to, again, ask you to be truthful and honest because I know your wheels are turning. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you hear it, the, the cracking on the voice and the, the drying up of the voice, it's not because you're smoking weed, dude. It's because you're nervous about things, because your wheels are turning. I can hear there's certain things you're saying every time that I think that you're hedging bets. There's a key word that you keep using over and over again. And I'm not going to get into detail about things. I'm just going to tell you, in my personal opinion and professional opinion, you've been doing this for 20 plus years, you're not being candid about things fully, Dave. Ask me specific I've, questions. I've asked you a bunch of specific questions. questions. Okay, let's and go over it again then. Because okay. I'm here to whole work. Dump it. Dump it. Tell me about things that are going on in Palm Bay. How, how about that? We'll just say, tell me the truth about all the nonsense that's going on in Palm, Palm Bay 
the politics, all right, let's the start people the making money that are benefiting off of corrupting people to do things. See, I don't benefit. know. I swear to you guys, I don't know who's making money. I told you what I thought Ben Jeffries was doing. That is the only person. But you know Aguilar is trying to control people. Well, I mean, he, Aguilar is not trying to control like you in the sense that you're, you're telling me. Aguilar is trying to. Okay, I've heard it from Aguilar's own, own mouth. Okay. Uh, I, is Aguilar you, just, you yourself have said that Aguilar is pushing campaign donations, cash, soft money to people. That's controlling people. That's controlling the people who are voting who would legitimately have a, a chance of racing. He's planning on who is videotaping it? people to right. collect sure. blackmail material. So, again, to, to stick all, with this. All I'm telling you guys is, is when we started this thing, we had, we had, let's start at the beginning for the elections. We had two people running. We were going to take over the council. Once we took over the council, and I mean take over the council with a conservative mind of thinking, mm -hmm. line of thinking, move forward with the things that we thought were important. At no point, now I'm going to be self, the self preservation right now. Mm -hmm. At no point, and I'm looking you dead in the eye and you too, mm -hmm. did I ever think that I was going to get a job like I got out of this? I know you hear other things on your video, and other people have said other things. I don't know about that. I'm telling you, I, at no point did I know that. Because I never thought Chad Schultz would leave. And that's what had to happen for me to get a job. Why did Chad Schultz leave? He resigned for personal reasons. And, and I found out, and this is probably not the place to say, but he had marital issues. So, you know, that's a leave there. And so, that being said, Greg offered me the job. When Greg offered me the job, now I knew Joe at the time. I, I just started becoming friendly with Joe because. We actually ran against each other. For you know, the mayor and Joe ran against each other. I started building this relationship over the last 18 months with Joe. It was strained initially because we were competitors, mm -hmm. but it got better. You know, the relationship got tighter. Did Joe has Joe done things that I questioned? Sure, but I'm not the type of guy that's going to go and sit there and sit, you know, constantly hammer. As long as he's not breaking the law that that you know affected what I'm doing in the city, what the city's doing. Absolutely. No. But Let's Joe's stop. planning to videotape people for blackmail material, that is right. breaking the law. And Joe's giving illegal camp campaign contributions, and Joe's, and Joe's, and Joe's. So let's just call a chicken a chicken and call bullshit bullshit. Okay. okay. And you, know, you do, by your own admission, know that Joe is committing, right, is, is doing things that are illegal, so continue. Right, right. Which means, which means that I have knowledge of it, which means I'm probably in the same ship as him, correct? Well, you participated in conversations and offered to pay for a part in a plan to develop blackmail or extortion material. Right. Um, but, I mean, I said I threw 50 bucks at a problem he had with watching people sort of coping as often as his to, building. To collect material to use for extortion or blackmail. I didn't know that at the time. But I, I told you I found out we talked about it later. To me, it So continue, though. I mean, so. You guys, I, 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 I'm, I'm really, really, because I beat myself up. I, I killed myself in the last three months trying to think of what it is you guys think is going on. I mean, Joe's not making a ton of money doing this. I mean, he's not making anything. But he's putting a tremendous amount of effort into it, and it's for a reason. Right. And I don't know what that is, Bridget. I know. I truly, I swear I mean, to you, I don't know what it is. I, I truly don't know what it is, Brad. Hey, seriously. I mean, like you said, I'll be, I'm self professed I, I am smart enough to know I am not that smart. <laughs> sure, okay? Me too. Simple as that. And say. I will tell you very, yeah, very simply that it is impossible for you to sit there and look at me and, and be honestly saying, I don't know what Dave, what properties does, does, uh, does Joe own? What properties, what, what properties potentially could he be earning some money for if, for instance, Things went right with the city uh, council. Let's just say something maybe related to what? marijuana. Let's just throw marijuana. They're, they're my point is, Dave, they're, you mean, they're you fully, mean you're he wants to get a certificate? Yeah. That's a state run gig. Yeah. We have well, nothing to do with that. Does Joe have plans to open a marijuana dispensary? Oh. oh yes. Well, I mean, I don't think in those terms. I, yeah, so what? I mean, so he can't, well, he can't well, apply. Well, no, he, he, can, I truly he can apply, but he needs votes on city council. Absolutely. Okay, so 
these are the things Joe's doing. Sure. He's lobbying get, his counsel. Okay, there's lobbying but, and there's corruption. Well, I don't I don't think that he's corrupted anybody. I mean, okay. So let me ask you this. If you are the guy who is going to be making the decision, and I come to you and you know I have all these properties and all these things for future endeavors, um, and I say to you, I go, hey, babe, you're a good guy. Go stay in my house for free. What would you think? And normal or not? Hey, no, 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 you're a good guy. You know what? John, you know what? You're a good guy. You give you a car. Or and I don't expect. Wait, I accept. I expect nothing. <laughs> or you're a city councilman. I'm going to pay the down payment on nothing. your house. So is, is that what he said? Is that what they said he said? Dave, we are we are really I'm telling you. I've never truly, heard that. We are truly, truly, truly spinning our wheels here. I mean, I'll be honest with you. You're a really nice guy, Anna. Anna and well, actually, I will tell you. You you have heard it because it's on here. Joe yeah. has said to you, I have offered to pay. Bailey a down payment on his house. I, I promise you that I heard it. And I you weren't that. you weren't drinking, it wasn't in a loud place. It was during the day. I, I'm telling you if that were the case, I would have told you that earlier. Okay. I don't but these guys talk shit, just like they talk shit about wiping drugs on the trip on the van. Okay. I thought that was a bunch of shit. I but told the, Stu as much. Did you hear? About did you hear me tell Stu? Oh yeah, I had the cops go out there and snip that. They, the, the, the dog didn't pick up anything. Did you hear me tell Stu that? So you did have the cops go out. No. Okay. I just That's told safe. Stu that. Yeah. Because he's an idiot. Because he wanted to do that. No, I didn't. I didn't hear you say well, that. Of course not. You just let the whistle. No. no well. but, but the uh, point is, I truly. I mean, the, the marijuana, th the uh, stores. I don't know what. Joe has on anybody but the mayor. I know that Joe and the mayor had a falling out. Joe was upset because the mayor didn't pay his rent and didn't pay a car note, so he repossessed his well, car. Well, no, no, that's not what happened. Joe gave the mayor a free house, and when the mayor wouldn't do what Joe wanted, then he went back after the money and re after him for money in retaliation for not voting the way he wanted. That is the way. Is that how it went out? No, I, I didn't know that, though. Joe told me that he rented him a house, and he refused to pay his rent, so he had him a bit. That's what Joe told me. That's the truth. And, and he also said he got him a car, too. Yes, he did get him a car. And when things went south, he what did he do? He possessed the car. But what other things did he have? Some cosmetic changes done to the office? What were those? I mean, Joe gave him the furniture. No, some of the protective cosmetic things that were supposed to be put in the office. Is that true? Did he have some changes done? That Was there bulletproof glass installed somewhere in the city uh, for the benefit of a rumor that they were trying to do that, that the mayor was going to get bulletproof glass put in because he's so concerned about Joe? No, it was, it was Joe. The, the mayor wants our city hall to look like we walk through a metal detector mm -hmm. and stuff, and then the bulletproof glass. There's two reasons why that, that you're talking about the old building. They, the people that get angry on their tax bills and stuff like that, and they scream it, it was, it, it gave comfort to the ladies working out front, the mm -hmm. guys. We have a uh, so, and that was in the old building. That Joe had nothing to do with that. I, I remember the facilities thing that came. Facilities is under me, so I remember walking through it a year and a half ago talking to the facilities guy. Yeah. Well, if you can imagine being on our side of the table, sure. and from your background, I think that would be easy for you to do because you went through the law enforcement academy. You were in the Army for a really long time, working for the U.S. government. You're in civil service now. Um, you are close yeah. with, spend social time with, planning a business with a man, Joe Aguilar, mm -hmm. who's a bad person. He's a criminal. He is a convicted felon. He continues to try to manipulate people um, for his own benefit. But yet, you want us to believe that you're on the right side of the moral dilemma mm -hmm. here, but yet this is the company you keep. When, when, when he, first of all, Joe, I never knew that Joe was in prison until after I got to know him. Joe's a very private guy. Mm -hmm. I think it was at his mother or his father's funeral or something like that. He moved to one of his Maybe kids Christmas. But when I found out, I saw a lot of good things that Joe did. You know, he passed out backpacks to home with the poor kids. Mm -hmm. He's fed people. He's helped people along the way. I saw a lot of good in Joe. I didn't see the bad in Joe like you see. Now, does Joe, does Joe try to manipulate the system? Absolutely. Did, 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 has Joe probably done the things that you said he's done? I, I would probably say absolutely. 
but I've not ever seen, I've never seen Joe pay anybody off. I've never seen mm -hmm. Joe, and I've never seen it. It's never happened. He's not paid my wife off. He's not, I know he's not paid Harry Santiago off. And I know he's not paid Trey off, or Trey would have told me. I mean, that's the truth. Well, I don't know that Trey would have told you. Well, um. because that's, see, I tell these guys all the time, there's only a couple of things that get you thrown in prison when you're elected. You know, beating your old lady and getting drunk and, and running over a cop. That gets you, that gets you out elected. You know, get you thrown off by the government. You know, gambling. Uh, you know, but these things get you thrown elected. Trey was doing all three of them at one point. And, and we had to rein him in. Me, my wife, his wife, we had to rein that guy in. Because he was going to lose his family. He was going to lose everything. What do you mean he was doing all three? He was, doing, he was gambling like no one's business. Mm -hmm. He got thrown in jail in South State from a casino. For getting a flight in the casino. He was drinking nonstop. Uh, with Bailey at the time. Uh, they were going at it nonstop. He was going to throw out a couple places. Right. right. And then he, you know, uh, Steve Furness told me he got thrown out of the bridge track. And he hangs out in pinups. And he hangs out in pinups. And he's, and and he's banging bras two at a time. Brothels in Tallahassee or outside Tallahassee. So, so, yeah, he's doing all these things at the time. And, I mean, I hate like, oh, you know, but, but you guys know all this already. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. that's fine with me if he wants to do that. That doesn't affect me. But when someone tries to collect that, Get and use it to extort him to control his vote. That's what does concern him. And that's what Joe is planning. And you were involved in some of those conversations. I, I just don't recall. I don't recall that, that we had those conversations. I know that we talked about the video cams. I, I, I told him about that. I know we talked about those. It wasn't, it wasn't anything I thought, and you asked Trey this, I sat down with Trey three or four hours at the American Legion, and I had a long conversation with him about his life and what he's gonna do with his marriage. And that is the God's honest truth. And I did, I, when giving a choice of putting video cameras up there and extorting somebody or not doing it, I chose not to do it. And that's the truth. And given a choice of, of this guy doing drugs and setting him up for the drugs, I chose not to do it. I called the cop instead. But to other people, you calling the cops is part of the plan to, to get bailed in trouble yeah, and fired. Uh, you said, let's be truthful. I'll be truthful. Okay. I called Jason West. I said, this is what, what we have. I said, I, if I wanted to, I could have called Paul Alf. We got a, a dog handler out there if they had set him up. But I didn't. Paul Alf is living in the cop. Yeah, he was a, he's a dog cop for a lot of years. He knows all the dog cops. So mm -hmm. I could have called him and ha asked him to do it. To get his dog, but he'd go out there and do it. It's a Melbourne jurisdiction. It's at a school. I could have done that. I didn't do it. I called Jason West. That's the right thing to do. You don't think so? Well, I've just heard too many conversations to think it was the right thing to do. No. Who's wearing wires, man? You got everybody wired? Is my phone wired? <laughs> I hope not, because my Wait. kids sent me some trashy shit. Hey, um, they couldn't answer that even if they wanted to. Okay. I, I mean, are we about done? Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to say uh, I do appreciate you coming in and you contacting us. Um, and I'm sorry that this has given you anxiety, but there's a lot of stuff we've collected that gives us anxiety. Sure. So it's good for us to hear your side of things. I'm glad that you came to Moral Crossroads and even though the conversations you have with other people are disconcerting and possibly conspiracy to commit crimes. Mm -hmm. um, you chose the moral path, but others didn't. It would be our suggestion that if there's more that you know or can find out about the people that did not choose the right path, um, that would benefit us. I think that would benefit the city of Palm Bay, and, and potentially it might benefit you. I, I'm not in a position to make promises about sure, what I, the U.S. Attorney's Office will or will not do, but I can give <coughs> some. I've been in the FBI 20 years, almost 20 years, and my experience has been people that come forward and do the right thing and help us in the end come out in a better position. Of course, you're going to have to, you 
you know, your attorney sure. won't be in a better position to advise you in that in that regard. Well, look, I, look, I, I promise you, I've given you everything that I know, I to the best of my memory, and I would ask just a couple, things, at least for the service of my country. So, far. if you're ever going to pick me up and want me arrested, just call him. I'm not going to run hide from him. I'm a grown man. Just call him and say, Dave, we're going to arrest you. Get to come down here to Orlando, wherever they, they do this kind of thing. And, and I'll go there and I'll process it and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do the right thing by it. I won't. I won't. So I don't think I've not done anything. I don't think, you know, the, the, the uh, see, it's the funniest thing that you think. I thought it was the nonprofit stuff that, we, that is. That it was the stuff that would bite me in the ass. You well, know what I'm saying? I can't say things look really great there either. But you know, that's the thing that's, the, but what's illegal? What, what's illegal there? I got the votes. I can, I can tell you, you know, I'll just be candid with you. Know, I, haven't, I haven't sat there and said, that whole Holton stuff, that's horseshit. I mean, that, that, that to, just hear me out, okay. okay? And I'll just tell you, you said, well, give me specifics. I'm telling you specifically, that is horseshit. That, that is nothing but just, Helping a friend out is going to help you out. You know that, I know that, Bridget knows that. You make your attorney, I'm going to go, go comment on you, sir. Um, but that's, that's, that's rubbish. You know it's rubbish. So when you tell us that, you know, that I'm a man in the country, and, uh, and I, I appreciate your service. I spent six years in the service. I get it. Okay? Um, but, you know, let's just call something to me. I mean, it, you know it's crap. And I'm going to tell you, that's why I, I specifically asked you. I mean, when we're talking about some of the extortion thing, the people you're dealing with that tried to drag you into this thing or were co-conspirators with this extortion thing and all this other stuff going on, if you think that if you're if you're stupid enough to think that someone would would be involved in that with someone else and not be involved in that with you or would not flip on you or would not this or that, well, I, I, um, you're you're just much dumber than I think you are, and I think you're a very bright guy, and I think you just. Try to just be very coy and give you little tidbits, like a lot of people do when we're talking. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't fool yourself and don't think that there's not a train coming down the track. Okay? And if you want respect and you want uh, respect, then you got to. It's a two-way street. I mean, sure. Certainly, I can tell you that out of dealing with Colonel Murphy and dealing with you here, I think that would be absolutely a courtesy that would extend. I, mean, I can't speak for uh, anything that would be federal, but certainly uh, if it's federal and state, and I had to say something. Would be yeah, I but think, you, you know, we would be of the same opinion. I mean, I'm not authorized to speak on behalf of the U.S. Attorney's Office, though I do feel quite confident that they would have that same But you, you, you can, you know, you, you say you, you, you want to be honest and you're being honest and stuff. I'm going to tell you that that's not the truth, and you know it's not the truth. You're being honest and stuff. But you, gotta, you, you, have to, you have to talk with your, your attorney, and you have to think about this, because there's nothing that you can say that will stop the train from coming down the track. Sure. Can't be on the better side okay. of things. Let me and ask you a question. And Trey, I'm sure he told you. I told him the same thing. So. Let, me, let, me, let me ask you first. Then keep it back on the yeah. so. Trey, just the Coy Clark piece alone mm -hmm. satisfied what Trey, Trey did. Now, why isn't that important to you? Because no one to, else is saying that. Has, has Trey, have you talked to Coy Clark? <laughs> Even Trey hasn't even said anything about the way part. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, absolutely not. Because, and you know, and I didn't have that relationship before Trey made that connection. Right. That was equal odds. Okay. But that's not what. Why would Trey say? You that? look at that from a time frame of when this connectivity between maybe maybe him going, hey, you know, Dave, this is a friend of mine, Goy, Goy Dave, blah blah blah, somewhere passing. I think I think if, if and there again to, to that it out, I think very easily it could be proven that 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 didn't happen in the same sequence of when he was elected or when he was hired to uh, retain by him. Um, I think you know that to be uh, to be accurate. So when you're trying to portray it like oh this five thousand dollar gift card and it's quite far, I know personally if I would if we were retained those were the things I would go right straight to every one of the board. And there again you know you look at the whole lawsuit. We didn't we never agreed to a five thousand. Javier, the only person that's saying this is you. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Sure, we'll retain them, but is it going to go up in a lobby for us for some funds? Based, go? based on the the invoice that I saw, I didn't see that invoice. Yeah, but that invoice didn't come out until recently. 
Yeah. I, if you remember meta, metadata on No one on, has seen that invoice before. Until you, have you talked to Happy Young? Yes. Because yes. he's had all the records. He didn't have that record. So. I mean, that's what he told me. He yeah, had he, he had it as of recent. Yeah. But then he told me himself he had all the records. Yeah, um, because Fulton just gave them to him. Yes. Why well, do you know that? Yeah. How am I supposed to know that? I'm just telling you. I'm you're not saying, that guy. I'm why not don't we buy guy. your side of the story? And the answer was, but I can only tell you what I know. You, okay. you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and I don't know why Javier is telling you what he's but I, I'm just telling you what I know. I asked Javier if he had the records. Javier said he did, and that's the truth. So you know, I, I don't want you to think I'm lying to you. I mean, I'm telling you the truth here. Um, Trey's a, Trey's a good man. I don't think Trey's going to go down that path. Trey's he may. Trey, in my opinion, is corrupt. You think so? Oh, don't even oh. say you don't. Oh, I don't. I, you I, know so. I have questions sometimes. You have sure. So, you have absolutely no on, doubt in your mind. You've even admit the guy. The, you're going to tell me that some guy procures prostitutes. That I know. That that, that 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 does all these things. We're not even talking about anything with payouts or graph or anything like that. Just let's just say corrupt. The term of corruption would be meaning well, takes money. Moral, yeah. professional, other. So, I mean, again, we're, we're, we're dancing around a la Clinton on a lot of these points. Uh, the thing I'm going to encourage you to do, and I think Reggie would, would, uh, would agree, is talk with your attorney, think about things, do a real, a real thorough soul searching. Because, you know, that plus, well, anyway, 25 boxes of documents from the city, uh, 19 plus servers and electronic devices, um, I, could, I could probably just just make John very wealthy by going through all the different things that we've gathered along this two, probably, maybe over I'm two years now. I'm, I'm not up here. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's good, Sam. So I, I'm just going to tell you, the, the whole, the whole. We get with, with him this week? Yeah. And then uh, schedule another appointment? Yes. Uh, and what yeah. I, I will. Um, There's a couple of things I have that I'm concerned with that I left out purposely. Okay. I don't want to talk to him. Well, what I, what I would, um, and I, I, I'm speaking from my own personal experience. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not authorized to speak on behalf of the attorney's office, but I have a relationship with them enough where I feel confident in saying where they would go. Whenever we in law enforcement talk to anyone, particularly someone who's coming to the table and helping us and being honest, our first. Let me ask you a question. Why didn't you guys reach out to me? Our first, I'll we'll explain that in a minute. Our first stab at coming to the truth, the truth is an evolving process. So. I did say making statements to me that are false is a violation of right. 1001 false statements. That being said, I recognize that people coming to the truth when they're cooperating is, is a process. Right. So if you get back, you sleep on things, you think about things, you come to your attorney and you want to come back in here and clarify statements that you made or add more detail to them, I would encourage you to do so. And I'm not going to say, but last time you said this and right. hold you to it. I'd rather continue. And do you understand what I, you, you've been in this position many times? So I don't want him to feel like if he has to clarify and, a statement, and we're going to hold him to it. And I'm original. pretty sure that you sparked memories that he hadn't thought about. Sure. Well, I told him so, that privately yeah. when you guys were out. Yes. Mm -hmm. and that's I said, look, these guys are bringing up stuff. I hadn't even thought about it. That camera thing mm -hmm. was a, was a three-time conversation piece that I decided not, I decided to talk to Trey, and that's the God's honest truth. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, fuck him, we'll, we'll get him. You know, that kind of thing. We'll, we'll set up, we'll set him up with hooks. You know, that kind of thing. I don't remember the exact word, but I, I remember the, the attitude, yeah. for, and, and I remember the conversation, but I hadn't thought about that. I mean, yeah, since I understand. Understand. And that's fine. Yeah, everyone, I mean, just totally yeah, uh, everyone goes through that process. We've seen that a million times. If we were in your chair, we would be going through that process too. That's We expect that, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Um, if you have other things that you've thought of that may be relevant that you didn't bring forward, uh, we would love to hear that, and I do think that would be in your benefit, but that's a decision between your, your attorney. Um, the door is open. Yes, and, the, and to answer your question, um, you know, everyone works in investigation differently, but by and large, the person we're looking at as potentially the bad guy, and we're still sort of figuring out who's on the side of what, because we have a lot of disconcerting information. Sure, it's politics. Um, is mm -hmm. we talk to that person generally last, 
However, when people start to retain counsel, at least at Department of Justice, we are not allowed to approach represented parties. Um, it's actually, you mean like me? Yeah, so if you retained a counsel and we heard you retained counsel, I'm not allowed to go. You can't call John and say, hey, can we talk Well, I could if I knew who your attorney was, but I didn't know that until he called me. So, no, it was um, like we called you, it was this grand jury thing. Yeah. Now, what's that all about? Um, uh, uh, that's just. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. Yeah, so the proceedings <laughs> of the grand jury are, are secret, not in a national security secret, but the proceedings of the grand jury are. Well, it's still is, treated the same way. It's a yeah. need to know kind of thing. My name's on there, John. I might want to know wait, that. They'll let you know <laughs> if you're needed <laughs> to know. And, you know. You know, you could indict this in a grand jury. You know that, right? Well, I will tell you that the U.S. Attorney's Office does not go forward with a case unless they can prove it 500 ways. Okay. I mean, beyond grand juries. So um, the grand jury is, is a mechanism for investigation uh, used by the United States Attorney's Office. So just because one's open does not mean it's going to result in anything. It's just a mechanism to issue subpoenas. So to compel documents and people to testify mm -hmm. to investigate something. Um, so that being said, it would you know your your attorney can probably explain the legal part of that more, um, but I mean a grand jury can be very preliminary in investigation. So just the fact that a grand jury subpoena exists isn't necessarily cause for concern. I, I would be more concerned about this oh, sort shit. of stuff. <laughs> you know, excuse the language. Yeah. Yeah, I sit there looking at the box while you guys are out here. It's going, Jesus. All right, so I'll ponder it. Keep. Keep an open mind and think about things. Talk to your counselor. Um, we're, again, you can tell neither of us are, are out to, to be evil, ugly people on a different good looking no matter what. But, anyways, so just ponder on this. So, so it and then let's plan on meeting you next week. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, we're with open you? all next week. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then uh, Murph, if you like, can sit on top probably Monday. You want to? I know I'm going to be drunk. <laughs> it, it's your I birthday, and you should have and a you're party. On leave. <laughs> well, you have a party. But if you guys tell me you're not going to arrest me at work, I could go back with it. I could. Uh, we have no uh, plans to arrest you. Well, call the city. Because if we do, party, you sorry, under circumstances, happy yeah. birthday to you, Colonel. Good seeing you again, sir. It's in, uh, well. I'm glad it's not that other keep squeaking. That little, that little midget I work with. That's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, hey guys. I always can tell you that I always enjoyed. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, take advantage of the water. That's going to be true. You can take it with me. All right, guys. Yes, you have a good day. Thank you very much again. Oh, I'll be here at the sofa.